Hey, what's up guys? Visualization is no doubt the most integral part or you can say the most crucial part when you first deliver design in front of clients and that should be definitely be very impactful since that is going to decide whether the project is in or out and a lot of softwares and plugins does that for example you have Lumion, you have Enscape, Twinmotion and a lot of them but what more important is the next stage that is that once the design is approved by client then what comes is that how efficiently and how prominently you deliver that design in terms of its execution that is how efficiently you execute that particular design with much less of chaos and stipulated time frame and with perfect coordination so this is where revit architecture and bim that is building information modeling comes into picture if you just go through the playlist uh, this is there in the description the link is in the description then all of my videos in all of my videos there are some of the other variations and I keep updating and refining myself in such a way that I can reach up to you guys in the best way and I can acknowledge you the best. For example, my last video was talking about a complete G plus 3 residential villa on a slopey terrain on a hilly region on a contoured site which had all the technical details that how are the structural elements joined to architectural elements. More precisely speaking that how is a column joined to beam and to floor and how uh, this structural elements join to wall with all its layers and all its perfect technical details okay so this tutorial is actually going to demonstrate the same thing that is this tutorial uh, this video is going to have two phase where in, in first phase i'll be talking about the same thing that is the architectural modeling but with much more refined in much more refined way and with much more precision but that would be the modeling of 3D interface. But as I've been talking always that Rabbit is not only about the modeling of 3D interface, but it also very prominently and efficiently does model the 2D interface. So the second phase of this video will talk about the modeling of the 2D interface. That is the technical details and the technical information that we feed to a particular built structure for its proper execution. For example, this video, the second phase of this video will talk in detail about scheduling, quantification, costing, segregation of floor areas and other technical details which are essentially needed uh, to feed to a particular project for its execution on site. Okay. So, hey guys, welcome back to PTS CAD Expert and myself architect Kumar Kapadia from the city of Surat in Gujarat. And if you think that this video was worth, then kindly enroll for this course and let's learn together and let's grow together and now without wasting a single second let's jump into the interface of rabbit Good evening students and a warm welcome to everyone. As a part of this course Master Diploma in Rabbit BIM, what all we have seen so far is the modeling of this 3D interface wherein we have seen all this 3D drafting commands but all of that in parts and pieces and in segregation. So Rabbit is not only about modeling of the 3D interface but it does involve the modeling of the 2D interface that is that we call the essential building assets or the information that we feed or we provide for the execution on site that is the dimensions, the details, the nomenclature that is the text and tagging part and the color fill legends, keynotes and symbols. But the implementation of that I want to show you on a complete structure or a project. So for today's class we are going to actually model a complete structure starting from scratch so this is that g plus two and a half residence residential villa which we are going to elevate today in rabbit and as per the students request i have extended it a bit wherein i have incorporated the basic structure and the exact solution of which will be given by the civil engineer but right now I have incorporated the basic conventional sizes and the basic structure tentative 
beam column position and its location and its sizes. Uh, since the only motive is to uh, make you guys clear that while working on an architectural model, how can you incorporate basic structure and how to work with the joint conditions that is how is essentially a column joined to a beam and beam to floor and all of the structural elements how are those joined to wall and what are the external layers of the wall and of course yes i have provided a basement in this uh, particular floor so all of that we are going to cover today okay so let's quickly get started and welcome back to pts care expert and myself architect kumar kapadia from the city of surat in gujarat and let's quickly start so i will go to insert and import cad and definitely you will be provided with the cad drawing of this and right now i have uh, saved that file on desktop and live mini project so the colors preserved layers all import unit should be inch manual center and with this okay and yes we have our autocad plan loaded in the 3d environment in the rabbit environment okay so the first and the foremost step is to create the levels since this uh, this structure has a basement floor okay so i will just go to south elevation and drop some levels i call ll and give it base offset of 10 feet and i'll just pick line and yeah so this is going to be zero basement level fine and just press yes and this is going to be one road level or ground level whatever you call i will call it road level then we have two length level which in this case as per the autocad plan we have three steps one two and three that is 18 inches of length we have so that should be essentially 18 inches I'll just break this and take this to that height so you can properly visualize. Again, LL and now on words we will have a standard floor height of 10 foot 1 and 2, 3. And this I'm going to call one first floor. This I'm going to call terrace level. Finally, this I'm going to call slap top. So, length level and yeah, first floor and terrace floor and slap top. Yeah, fine, that's okay. This can be actually uh, just 31 feet. It's 9 feet 6 inches that's enough or 9 feet yeah fine so now let's go to road level and we will have to do this a couple of times in both categories and each and every view we will have to convert this autocad plan to half tone and by selecting this i will just take this to basement level and now i will go to the basement level okay and here again i need to turn it to half turn okay so first is that we are just considering that the footing level from footing level whatsoever is the footing level the columns have elevated up till this basement level and we will start by adding a, a, a floor actually the slab will not be casted there will be a floor of pcc on this basement level okay so i'm going to go to basement level and just simply create one simple floor floor architecture and duplicate it and call it one of oh, it's not important one and call it uh, basement level slab or oh, not slab pcc uh, and I'm going to edit type and give it a thickness of six inches. Okay, and right now I'm not giving it any material. Just click OK. And 
boundary line and I'm just going to draw this simple okay and let's go to 3d and CC also I need to turn on the AutoCAD plan to half tone in this view as well and we have the base plate for the basement level laid okay but before proceeding further I would just like to add a couple of materials so that we can work fluently uh, with and we can concentrate on the 3d modeling part and every time we don't have to keep on working with the materials okay so I'm just going to define certain materials I'm just going to duplicate this and call this one main wall 9 inch okay and this should again I need to duplicate here as well call it one main wall and I guess we selected the wrong material so let's do it one more time fine material and default default yeah fine duplicate it and rename one main wall nine inch And I'm going to duplicate here as well. Just call it one main wall and give it a color, white color. Yeah, fine. What important is this graphics? And under that, I'm going to change this cut pattern. You can, of course, uh, define a new fill pattern. And from while going to custom, you can browse and look at that AutoCAD pad file and you can load the AutoCAD pattern also. But right now I'm going to, just to save time, I'm going to select something which is relevant. And I will select this aluminum diagonal edge. Okay, fine. So with Dex, uh, duplicate that again and I'm going to call this plaster. Since we are going to work with several different other layers, again going to duplicate this as well call this plaster and I'm going to apply the same this color material to that okay fine now I'm going to duplicate this I'm going to call this brick beds since the flooring is also going to have a lot of different layers we are, we are going to provide the conventional layers that is the brick beds for waterproofing and mortar layer and sand bedding and etc so we need to define so the appearance is not important since this is not going to be seen visually but even though i will just duplicate this and call this brick beds and graphics is very important and for that I, this time i need to go to a new fill pattern called a brick beds since rabbit don't has the pattern for brick and this I'm going to call custom and browse and look for the AutoCAD pad file and sorry AutoCAD shortcuts and yeah this is that and from that I can look for any of this yeah I'm going to select this and import units I'm going to turn it to 0 0.2 and that's fine okay and yes next is I'm going to duplicate this again and I'm going to call this one sand bedding or PCC, whatever. Sand bedding or PCC. And going to duplicate here as well. Sand bedding oblique PCC. Fine. And uh -oh. sand bedding. Fine. And going to graphics. I'm going to give it a material of uh, if 
but pattern of sorry not material sand dense and okay and again going to duplicate this call it one motor duplicate call it motor if you don't duplicate then that will the cut pattern will merge for this different materials and this i'm going to say that should be gypsum plaster yeah fine okay and with all this materials defined i'm just going to click apply and okay okay and like yeah one one last i forgot too so again this one whole main wall should be duplicated i'm going to call this one um, basement pcc finish material copy and duplicate paste and now for this i am going to say that the cut pattern foreground should be none and this layer is going to be visible so i am going to apply it a material and while going to appearance library i am going to look for something relevant that is We are going to apply a paper block onto this. So yeah, I'm just going to use this. And I will replace this. And sorry, after replacing, I was supposed to duplicate it. Do this. So we don't end up messing up with the Autodesk material. Since we are going to make changes in the tile pattern. But so this sample size is two feet, six inches. I'm just going to change this to something like six feet. Okay, and done. And apply and okay. Fine. So with all this material defined, first what we are going to do is that we are going to name the structural framing and the columns. So columns and the structural framing that is the beam. So uh, this particular slab, 6 inch slab, uh, will not a cast slab, it will only be a PCC and there will be a reinforcement along the periphery. But we will have some beams, okay, beams and tie beams. So let me go to basement level. And I'm going to architect your structure and I'll click beam. And right now we don't have, so we need to load family and go to the English Imperial. And under this, we have this structural framing. Is it? Yeah, structural framing and concrete and concrete rectangular beam. Yeah, fine. Okay. So. This is the sizes it comes with. So I am going to select this simple 12 cross 24, but that too is something which I don't want since the beam is going to be. I have taken the size of column 1 feet by 1 feet 6 inches, that is 12 inches by 18 inches. So we need to take the size of beam also that. So I am going to just duplicate this and call it 1 feet cross 1 feet 6 inches. And for the breadth, one feet is height, uh, fine. So for height, I'm going to give it 18 inches of height and just press OK. And I will just lay this. But before laying this, I want this uh, Z justification to bottom so that actually we can visualize that what we are drafting. So first is that we will have a beam from here to here. So you can see that the beam has been laid. We just change this wireframe. And, um, delete and beam and actually you can lay it manually also. You can just pick lines also. Picking lines would be more easy. So I will just select this and it's Why justification should be left or right? Yeah, fine. Sorry. So again, delete it and beam and pick lines and with Y justification to left. I'm just going to pick. Yeah. So perfect. And I'm going to select this, this, and this. And I'm just going to press space or just in this case, I need to turn, change the Y justification to right. And I will take this all the way to here. So 
since this will be the main beam and this will be the tie beam okay see as far as the structural part is concerned i might be incorrect at some places but just please pardon me since the exact solution will be given by the structural engineer but my motive is just to show you the implementation of structure while working on an architectural model so just consider that this to all the way to this end um, yeah fine and now i'm just going to actually this floor uh, this floor has walls over here only so one and two only this beam will this two beams will come and this dotted autocad plan you are seeing that is the structural framing and the beam for the this particular round floor layout okay so beam and again just pick lines and pick this line and pick this oh sorry yeah and just delete this change this justification to right this will go all the way to here and here we have a lift shaft so that will have an rcc for the a wall throughout so okay so that's it and now let's go to 3d and yeah so see these are the ground beams and just need to select all of this and sa that will select all of that and i will just uh, turn this z justification to top okay and yeah so this is the way it appears actually i just made it the z justification top since i wanted to visualize it while drafting in 3d so i will just hide this autocad plan and what i will do is quickly go to modify and join all this with the floors It's fine. So now if I go to basement level and if I take a section, let's take this and also let me draw one horizontal section since we will need it later in later part. just take a section and yes if i turn to turn on this and yeah so this is the beam uh, yeah that's too much p8 yeah that's perfect and this is the surface pattern of the beam that we are seeing in elevation and this is the cut pattern of the this uh, concrete rectangular beam structural element and the floor which we not provided any material so let me just uh, go to this floor and edit type and right now let me just provide a simple rcc uh, sorry not rcc concrete material anyways that floor is not going to get visible so it doesn't matter that what material you apply but what important is that this should have a cut pattern of concrete and uh, surface pattern i will just turn into no pattern for now but you guys don't forget to duplicate or you'll end, end up messing with the material of rabbit apply and okay and let me just turn this to fine and okay that's perfect so this will not be a slab this will be just be a pcc which will be having a reinforcement along its periphery but right now i'm just considering an ideal situation okay and this is the base plate which is joined to the beam okay so now let's further continue and let me go to 3d oh, sorry not 3d and basement level and let me create the columns first so columns and architecture and mm, sorry structure and columns you can also access it from here column and structural column and you don't have one 
you have only this as like just like that beam you need to go to load family and english imperial and structural column and concrete concrete rectangular column Oops. and this has already one type defined which is one feet by one feet six inches so we don't need to duplicate it and what we just need to do is that this instance properties should be changed to height and the basement level top constraint is invalid in height. Let's cancel this and we are on the basement level yeah so height and i would like to go go till road level that's fine and so one way of laying this column is that let me just show you quickly architecture and you have this function called grid so you just did one two three this applies to both the beam that is the structural framing and the column which you can join very easily with structure and column and all grids I will just select all of this so you see that Whenever I select this, so the columns are laid automatically on the intersection portion of this, this finishes. And likewise, you can also add this structural beam and all grid, and you see that all the columns. But then this is very situational. Then again, you need to manually adjust it because uh, some designers often provide these days a baseline also. So when you provide the baseline, I just show you one and the the importance of this face line or center line is not only the placement of the beam column in Revit, but also you can give the dimension of shift line and lot many other features it does have. So this I will turn to A and this is again going to be this face, this, and finally this, yeah. Okay, so when you have such uh, such situation wherein you are going to provide a baseline and also the, the uh, orientation of columns is changing on alignment along the alignment if it is changing its orientation from what uh, exactly vertical to perpendicular or horizontal so in that case you can just go to this column and let's say all grid and just select this one grid and place it and after placing it just modify and align it. And just align this. So even if you place this column this way, align, if you just zoom in, then you see that the AutoCAD plan will never coincide or will never overlap with the structural 3D element or any 3D element you place it in Revit. So I just show you that even if I just move this column and if I select LI, that is the line command, then it will snap. When you hold onto this AutoCAD plan, so it will snap to at some distance from this. But this not need to be worried. So it is actually snapping to the same line, but it will show a little bit of displacement. So I'll just align this and this much portion is fine. Okay. And likewise, you can just CO and then quickly one, two, and now we have to add rotate RO and rotate this column and then again modify align and align to the space align to the space okay and then co and place it to desired location 
before proceeding further just have a cross check that whatever you laid has been laid properly fine and let's go to 3d and we have our columns placed okay which is going from this base plate up till the road level top constraint is road level okay fine. now let's add this particular so see here we have made a mistake sorry so let's move this yeah move it perfectly in place so the next step is that we have to add walls to this particular basement level but before that i want to add a ramp okay so this is the ramp which is going from this ground floor up to this basement now architecture and if you want to go to the detail then you can refer that video wherein i'm explaining that how to lay the ramp but right now i'm just going to be duplicate and say custom ramp and for the residential slope i am just considering the ratio of 1 gem 7 that is if i want to rise 10 units of distance in height then i have to walk 10 cross 7 that is 70 units of distance in length whatever it is meters p fractional imperial or metric system but the ratio should be 1 gem 7 so I would say that the maximum incline length is of 70 feet okay and the slope is 7 the concept of this has been clearly explained in the video so don't get confused with it and I will just press ok and I will just create from this end to this end 1 and from this end to yeah perfect and what I will do is that I just extend this boundary lines and match it with the configuration yeah fine and yeah so you see that 70 feet of incline ramp created zero inch remaining so as soon as I just click yes and now if I take this section here then you can see that ramp has been created perfectly coming from you see the road level up till this intermediate height and then properly visualizing 3d okay so i will just delete this railing for now okay now so your ramp is created so now let's uh, go to basement and let's start adding some walls as first as this compound wall i need to add then we have the stair cabin and we have this lift shaft so again um, i need to create walls and edit type and duplicate this and call it one main wall nine inch or oh, first is that one compound wall And that should be that I'm taking nine inch. Edit type, and I'm going to enter here nine inch, and I'm going to insert. <coughs> sorry, I'm going to insert two layers. There should be one four and one five. This doesn't have any technical meaning, but we will just follow the hierarchy that is laid by Rabbit. That one four should be on the exterior side, and one two five should be on the interior side and we are going to give it a thickness of 0.5 inch this plaster layer in this condition i'm just considering both external and internal plaster to be 12 and 12 half inches okay and for this material we have already defined this main wall okay which has the cut pattern of that appearance doesn't make any difference because this layer is not anyways going to be seen so one main wall and then finish one that is going to be the plaster layer which doesn't have the cut pattern okay i duplicated that still it is showing that i want to change the plaster layer cut pattern to none i hope that does not change in the wall yeah fine so plaster layer 
have a no, no cut pattern but the appearance is important and for uh, since it is a compound wall so we need to define one more material and the plaster layer will be added this material would be actually added to the regular walls but in case of compound wall i guess i need to define one more material so uh, let's duplicate this and call this one compound wall material okay and duplicate this and sorry before you have to first assign the material and then duplicate it but okay fine so i will just go to the stone and replace this oh too dark so i'll just look for this masonry stone thumbnails oh, sorry thumbnails Missionary M M M. Yeah, fine. Yeah, I'm just going to select this. Okay, and now duplicate and call it one compound wall. And this is something which you are going to see in elevation. So you know, don't need to provide the cut pattern or the surface pattern. Let the graphics be none for both the surface pattern and cut pattern. Okay, and apply and okay. And we are going to apply both of this compound wall material to the external layers of plaster. And the internal layer, let it be main wall, since it's going to have cut pattern of brick. Yeah, so that's fine. Oh, oh. oh my God, sorry. Just need to do all of that. Okay. Copy and insert now finish two five Let's finish one five four and this to compound wall material and this to main wall yeah which has this cut pattern and okay point five and 0.5 okay and okay and yes and this location line should be four face exterior and i'm just draft, drafting the wall so you see that as soon as i draft the wall the external layer of plaster half inch 12 mm that is added just draw this from here and this point You can also snap, you can pick lines and snap. But okay, and right now you cannot see anything. Just I change this to fine. Then you see that the cut pattern of brick is showing now. Okay, and with this all one and tab, with it all selected, I would say the base constraint should be basement level, and the top constraint should be right now only road level. Let's move slowly step by step and if i just go to 3d and r enter perfect okay so yeah so next is that i want to create the walls for this but uh, before that i want to define one more material and that is the ramp material but okay uh, we'll do that later first let me just create the wall and wall and this time this is going to be edit type and duplicate and call it one main wall nine inch okay and edit and i will just change this to plaster and rest all will be same okay okay and from base level to road level and we just start constructing or let's pick faces this side so as soon as i pick you see that oh, oh sorry 
this is press tab you can also pick faces wall tab let me just draw this time Let's add the wall for the lip shaft. And so I need to go to wall and edit type to pick up this and call it 4.5 inch. Okay, and everything will be same except for this thickness will be changed to 4 feet 5 inches. Okay, and then uh, one more wall I need to define that is. I will change, uh, make this compound wall, edit type, and duplicate this and call it uh, one lift shaft. Okay, and everything will be same, but this will be one, one gem six, and this would be the material of, let's define another material call it one lift shaft and the cut pattern is not important or cut pattern or surface pattern but the appearance I'm just going to go to appearance library and concrete I'm just going to select this any existing and then duplicate it and call it one lift shaft Okay, and click apply. And okay. Actually, for this, there is no need of extra uh, layers. You can just so just delete this, and delete this, and give this a material of that lip shaft. Okay, that would rather make more sense. And the graphics should have the cut pattern of complete. Apply. Okay. So let me just draw this one, and let me take from all the way from base level to terrace floor. One, two, three. Okay. So it is showing that cut pattern of concrete. That's fine. Wall. Select this main wall 4.5. Draw it from this end to this end. That's okay. Delete wall core face exterior. Yeah. So that makes sense now. Fine. Okay. So now if you just see the in 3D and oh, wow. You have your lift shaft created. Okay. With that concrete material. And right now, if you see that you are seeing this entire structure in its unfinished state, that is, this particular slab is also, if I just go to the section one, then you see that this is. Uh, slab or the PCC, whatever it is, but it is in its unfinished state. There will be certain layers of finished layers of flooring that should be added to this, and the same applies to this column as well. This column will not be seen in its unfinished state like this, and will have a external layer of plaster wrapped to it. For example, if I just go to modify and join this wall with this column and this wall with this column. Then you see that this external layer of plaster has been added to this much portion, but this much portion is extruding out. So, uh, projection. So that needs to be covered, okay? Same is in this case. Right now, we don't have any walls overlapping much with the columns. So, 
this go to basement and take this all the way to here yeah so this is it okay so we need to add some few layers to this flooring and also to this columns and also we need to apply a ramp material to this so let's first apply uh, ramp material just go to and put it at this and call this one ramp material and that is not going to have any pattern so just for the visual appearance and go to appearance and while going to this appearance library I'm just going to go to concrete and I'm going to apply the syrup vertical and replace that in the asset browser and after replacing I'm going to duplicate this and call it one ramp material uh -oh. okay and just change its styling to something fit five feet something like that makes it more eight feet okay and apply and okay fine and now let's go to this structure that is the ramp and here in we don't have an ability to add the layers to it so we'll just apply this ramp material and okay fine okay uh, let's uh, go to let's go to the basement plan and let me just show you the section of this so if you see the section then this particular whether it is a slab or pcc whatever it is but it is joined to this structural element okay but if i just take this section all the way from here to here then you see that this is the joint condition that is this is the uh, floor and you have the wall elevated from this particular end okay so we again need to okay sorry this yeah join this as well fine but what my point is that you will have some extra layers onto this floor for example if i just take this section all the way to this columns then you see that this columns Yeah, so this wall, this, let me just take this one. So if I see the section, then you see that these two columns are getting cut, but this columns will go down, go, go down up to the footing level. Okay, so the joint condition in this case should be join geometry and we need to join it with this. And you need to do that for all the columns. So let's go to 3D and just select this floor and this one column and say that isolate category okay and quickly like join one and join all the columns This was joined. Uh, yeah, fine. Okay. Now let's go to section one and select this floor and go to edit type and go to edit. And now I'm going to add a couple of layers to this one, two, three, and four. And all of that should be finished one four since it is on the external side. And this should be. 100 mm 100 mm so this is the power of your rabbit where you can switch between if you type mm then automatically it will accept that and this should be 20 mm this should be 12 mm 
I will explain that what are all these layers and this should be 19 mm. Okay. So this is supposed to be the brick beds for waterproofing, which doesn't have any material, has a cut pattern of this. Okay. And as soon as you see that, this will be seen here. And this layer has been added. Okay. And this next will be the sand bedding. Sand bedding or PCC, whatever the case. In this case, sand bedding okay and this would be the mortar with gypsum plaster and finally this would be the basement okay basement pcc finish material finish material of that okay and with all this i'll just press okay and apply and okay so the all this layers has been added okay so what you need to do is now you need to trick rabbit by saying that i want this unfinished level of slab at this particular level defined so i'll just go to this and let me just turn on the visibility and turn this un and length to millimeters and measure this as 151 so I will just give it a height offset of 151 okay so now you see that this is perfectly the way it is but still we have a problem the problem is that this column is joined to this floor doesn't matter but what we need to do is go to join and switch order and make this column go all the way to this point so this columns are going to get going to go down and we need to do that for all the columns and we need to do that for all columns while going to 3d but uh, i think right now i have just shown you the concept now, wherever from wherever you will be taking the section okay let's just do it quickly And this will help us in quantification, okay? And see, this is not yet switch order. All of this. Fine. And this too we did. This is left. Which order I'm just going to do this for one level otherwise it will take a lot of time to complete the entire tutorial just to make your concept clear join and switch order this columns as well so this is joined I guess Join switch order and perfect okay now you will see this in 3d and HR then also we need to have a vertical section, horizontal section and see that this ramp is going all the way to the unfinished layer. So that is what it happens when uh, it gets casted. We'll go to the unfinished level, but 
even if you just want to give it a proper visual appearance then this is 151 so just give it an offset of 151 and that will automatically fall in place so now if you go to 3d see that yeah okay so next is that we need to give the layer of plaster to all this exposed columns fine just let me select all of this sa and uh, the base constraint is basement level just give it a base offset of something like minus uh, 8 feet just an assumption okay okay so that will work to the footing level and yeah perfect everything is joined and we don't know we don't need to provide the layer of plaster to this beams because anyway they are not going to get seen they are not going to they are not going to be seen not going to stay exposed okay so now going to basement level uh, we will provide the layer external layer of plaster to this columns so while going to architecture you see that under column section you also have this uh, structural column and column architecture so column architecture uh, the purpose of that is only that it will wrap along the entire structural column okay and for edit type, I'm just going to select. Um, okay, I need to change the units back to feet and fractional inches. And column architecture and duplicate edit and duplicate and call this uh, half one inch should be the layer of wrapping okay so or maybe say half inches so half inch on both the sides so 13 inches cross 17 inches so the depth should be 17 inches and the width not 17 19 sorry <laughs> 19 18 plus 119 so and width should be 13 and just rename it and call this 19 okay okay and with that base constraint height and height up to road level and yeah everything is fine i'll just click here and you see that Just need to move it and do it one for one column move and move it 0.5 of an inch fine and with this what i can do is just go to copy and copy it for all the columns And just place one and rotate and rotate it and again move it and move it 0.5 and 0.5 in this direction and copy and place it one and two three that's okay. What we just need to do is that select that rectangular column and go to edit type and give it a material of uh, plaster which will not have any graphics pattern but will have the appearance of this wall paint. So you look, it appears to be one homogeneous surface. And now if you go to 3D then you see that all of your exposed columns are wrapped with the layer of plaster. Only thing you need to do is that go to modify and again let me just select one and two and just isolate category so we can have that much only fine and 
go to join and select this column and object. Select the structural column and then select the layer of wrapping. Okay, join. So, okay, and if I just press HR, then also there are some walls which we need to join. So just join and select this. Uh -oh. You need to be very careful of what you are selecting, otherwise that will end give you an error so join and this time we will select the structural column and this wall no join and structural column yeah okay and this here it is so everything seems so perfect so far and we don't have any issues and now if we go to section one and you see that this all, with all the columns has that external layer of plaster added to it if you just this will not yeah. which again you need to join it with this floor in case of all the columns i'm just going to do it for this few columns and for the rest you can do it okay and now we are going to proceed ahead with the modeling part so the first step is that we need to construct the road plate for the road level and also have all this uh, beams that is the structural framing onto this road level which would connect all the columns Okay, so let's quickly do that. But before that, I think I need to add a wall to this too. So let me just go to basement level again and then architecture and wall. And with nine inch wall and core face exterior and base constraint basement and top constraint to right now just floor, um, road level. Okay, and let me just draw this and connect this. You see, as soon as I connect, there's the accent layer of plaster wraps, and likewise connect and this. Press tab and connect this to this. Okay, let me just go to 3D and modify and join and select that structure and this wall. Yeah, so everything is perfect so far. Okay. So now let's take this AutoCAD plan to the road level and let's create the floor plate for road level and basement, sorry not basement, and road level and I need to drag this AutoCAD plan to this position. So modify, align and okay. So delete and um, Let's create some uh, first this particular floor plate for the built portion. Okay, it is doing the, just a layer of PCC since uh, you know that the road level to plinth level is one feet six inches and that is the beam depth. So in this case, I will consider the inverted beam. I will place the inverted beams and we'll have a layer of PCC, just a layer of PCC with no unfinished with no finished layers because not uh, going to be visible so let's go to road level and architecture and floor and by default it will select the last that we were working on that is basement level pcc i'm going to edit type and call duplicate this and call this road level pcc and let me be very specific okay and edit type and i'm just going to get rid of all these layers and delete this since the layers are not going to be visible, so there's no need of providing that. Just provide 150 mm of PCC. Okay, and 
fine and let's just select this and fine and let me just deduct the staircase and the lift cabin from that TR and yeah fine TR okay and that's perfect only thing we need to add this so actually it's uh, no needed because we are go way going to add the flooring for backyard at the splint level but since it is a part of this so let's add that otherwise it is not actually needed tr and yes and join oops sorry split line tr and tr and draw a line from here to here and tr and this is just going to be finish and lines cannot be tr and, yeah. and just finish uh -oh. join this as well and i hope that there are no loopholes don't attach and let's go to 3d and perfect so now what we need to do is like hide and quickly join the floors so just stay tuned i will quickly join So this is the layer of PCC at road level which we have added and now let's proceed creating other parts and pieces of this particular road level. This, this would be the backyard and this also and this entire would be the extended balcony or whatever you call and this would be the parking. So let's just quickly create floors for that and floor architecture and this time this road level PCC I will not say but I will say that of course we will need uh, the finished floor layers for that so basement level PCC and uh, before that I'm just going to press UN and turn this to millimeters or actually there's no need of turning it to millimeters you can edit type and duplicate and call this backyard of road level backyard okay and go to edit type and just change this to 50 mm that is one bit thick okay and the overall thickness is and yeah of course i need to change this material so i will just uh, duplicate this and call this um, parking and backyard um, what do we call yeah parking and backyard and copy and 
just go to appearance library and look for actually we can directly select the image from here also duplicate this and just create a parking in backyard and for that I'm going to select a different uh, we already selected this so site work S and pavers block I'm looking for paver yeah this is this is relevant so uh, actually this is this is very much bright so Yes, select this and change its tiling to yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Fine and okay. And yes, okay. And just create Pick lines and line two and join this and this two. This is the wash area and this two. We have the same. We can actually select any material. Not necessary that what material I selected. You have to go with that. And this two, and this I'm going to select this. And also this. Also this. Split lines, TR, this with this, this with this, delete, yeah, that's fine. And I guess uh, here are something, let's just first see that. How does it look? Don't attach, it's fine. Go to 3D. Yeah. Oh, perfect. No issues. The only thing that we need to join is so modify and join. So that's fine, a little bit of glitch, but I think we don't need to worry about that. Fine, let's proceed with constructing the another portion. But before that, I would just like to take the structural framing about this so we can have a proper understanding of that. So I will just select all this and SA, that will select all of that and just uh, copy the clipboard and paste align to selected level and I would like to place it at road level but that's gone down but we need the inverted beams so what I will do is that I will again select this and SA that will select all so I'm going to deselect the one on the bottom and with this uh, top one selected I'm just going to change this justification to Z justification to bottom and yeah so now we have our inverted beam 
paste only thing that we need to edit it a bit that is we need to remove certain and few of the beams and we need to add few so uh, for that the AutoCAD plan will help us and let me just turn this to CC and hide unnecessary things hide categories and this as well and yeah and I think I don't need this beam to here same way this to here and this to here and also I don't need this since we are going to have okay and yes so we need to add a couple of um, beams so for that i need to turn it to hl and we will have one beam here and here which will be fine since we have a wall here this one and two so there will be a beam over here okay and also this particular place so i can just go to architect and structure and beam and this time placement plane is road level perfect and z specification to uh, bottom yeah fine and let me just pick lines so that will create it properly just drag it connect it and likewise beam and and here I don't think that we have any wall so we don't need any beams at this level onto this particular portion but uh, just for let's extend this beam okay so yeah we will have one beam over here as well fine between one and just pick lines, pick this and change this to right. Yeah, okay. And what else? 3D and okay. So now we have, have all the filling over here this particular level and then we will have the slab casted uh, not slab but, but uh, again the PCC for this particular floor okay PCC or slab whatever you say so but before that I think that I need to cover this wall few walls which are going to few few of the beams which are going to stay exposed I need to give it a layer of plaster see I, I forgot to add over here and this also so both level and this should end here and beam and snap the clients and one more oh, two times so this should stop here and TR and join this with this and that's perfect yeah okay so this is going to be visible from outside this face and this face of course if I just take this wall this is the wall so you see that if I just take this wall and drag it then the external layer of plaster will be covered if I just join this beam with this wall then only that, that much portion of the wall will be detected and only the external plaster its wraps but I just want to be very much specific and want to take any chance okay so what we will do in this case is that I will create good architecture and and this time I'm, we are going to work in 3D itself and wall 
this is going to be edit type and the duplicate and call it one beam wall okay and give it a thickness of if you remember that the one one feet is the thickness okay and with that external plaster layer I would just I would won't need a plaster only on one end because that the rest is going to be hidden and okay and okay I'm just going to pick faces and not pick faces I'm going to pick lines so I let it fall over that see I'm fine add it oh, oh sorry constraints we need to change so this should be from road level and up to length level and with that I'll just pick and press tab yeah so you see that only the layer of plaster has been added and let's go to modify and join geometry and select that structural framing and join it to this wall so see how perfect okay so one homogeneous and also join it this and we don't have any lines perfect and likewise we don't have the plaster on the internal face but only on this edge and the same way we will need to add it on to this face and also to this face since some of its portion is going to get visible so architecture and wall and pick and with the same constraint we will select this press tab oh, sorry space and select this and modify and join and structure and perfect and what I need to do is that go to road level and take this all the way through only to here so we can properly quantify it and 3D again and likewise architecture and wall pick lines only this and this and both of that I need to press space and invert space yeah and this two space and just modify and join select the tab and structural framing watch here and structural framing and wall and likewise structural framing and wall and I think this needs to be Let's be a little here. Mm -hmm. Why? Delete. Okay. And 3D. Yeah, that's perfect. We unnecessarily created one. And this needs to be splitted. And for the perfect. So, and uh, split. Just, I'm going to road level, get somewhere here, and drag this all the way till here, and drag this all the way till here. It's a perfect quantification. Okay. And 3D. Yeah. So, we need to create the floor for that length level okay so again I guess I forgot to do this also yeah, right. so architecture and wall and pick just load level and drag this all the way to here press tab a space not tab space then modify join and structural framing with the wall yeah fine and
and I don't want to see a single face which is left off to give you add a layer of plaster. And if you see this and this is the oh this is actually the floor and I suppose that uh, oh yeah so since we have provided the inverted beam so let's even just give this floor offset of six inches fine so this PCC has been given the offset of now and now we don't have this visible okay and all of this are going to get hidden so not an issue and let's join all of that and yeah the rest So now let's create the floor for this particular and let me go to road level and this is going to be the actual floor so architecture and floor and floor architecture and this is that we are going to say that edit type and uh, let's select that the one yeah road level backyard fine edit type and duplicate it and call it plinth floor plinth level floor okay and everything will be same all the layers will be same only this we are going to change and call it duplicate and call it plinth area uh, plinth floor material and just type living so we can just differentiate copy and go to appearance library and appearance library and flooring and select any of the this and this beach with natural and this replace this on this both have an insane matter so we just uh, duplicate this and just change the styling to uh, something like five feet and done and uh, the duplicated I'm going to call this plinth floor material living and just click apply and OK okay and fine and I'm going to draw the boundary line if you don't have the reference of what I can plan uh oh so this is going to be from <coughs> sorry and we will just make use of the existing lines and of course this is the wash area and of course yes, we need to deduct this toilet and wash area also since we are going to provide different material to it so that load will be plastered differently so I'm just going to edit pick lines and exclude this much we are Yes, with this, I'm just this also, I guess. Yeah, okay. And with this, I'm just going to finish and don't attach and go to 3D. And where did it create it? Created on load level. Sorry, I forgot to quickly in the constraint. Let's change it to pens level and fine. I 
guess that I should have just pasted the floor first because I'm going to join this modify and join it. works so not an issue And now if I just go to this section 2, then you see that I need to elevate the finish floor level of this RS UN and length I change to millimeters. Okay, and then measure that is 101. So I need to select this floor, just cast it at print level and give it an offset of 101 mm. And this would be the perfect and done okay also i will join this to this beam and perfect yeah so let's go to 3d and yeah it's perfect also we need to hide the spaces since those will be visible as to the parking space and this is the staircase cabin stair cabin and so this portion this structure shouldn't be visible and that should be the layer of plaster should be the wrap so architecture and wall and road level to plinth level yeah that's fine i'm just going to pick lines and one press uh oh sorry and select this and space Okay, and likewise, walls and pick face, pick lines, and this and this. Yeah, fine. But we need to exclude that has created the entire wall. If you see that, so we need to exclude that part and join the geometries. So for that, uh, first let me just hide this H H and modify and join. And with this, I'm going to join this and. Likewise, uh, with this structure, I am going to join this. Yeah, fine. So that's perfect now. So likewise, here too, you need to join. So with the structure, the wall, yeah, perfect. And likewise, with this structure, this wall. Okay. And now only what you can see is the layer of plaster. Okay. And just drag this a bit or just TR and join this with this. It's not joining, so it doesn't matter. We go to road level and select this WF and where is that part? Mm. That's selected, go to not road level, yeah, road level. Sorry, not road level, but yeah, you can just drag this here in this end. TR, join this with this, yeah, perfect. But again, this is a whole, this allows, yeah, fine. Just take this all the way to here and take this here. Okay, and just see it in 3D and yeah, now it's perfect. Okay, so that is how you manipulate the surfaces. And if I just press HR, AutoCAD plan, I will press HH and yeah, this is fine. So this is the uh, finish floor layers so that will be hidden once we draw the wall that's not an issue so so the next step is to create 
this particular floor that in a such a way that that would serve as an extended plinth area for that plinth floor just let me go to the road level plan and if you see that this are the semi-open spaces and the informal spaces which serves at the plinth floor that is the ota and the wooden deck and the garden and everything so we are just going to create that okay but before that uh, i would like just like to go to basement level and see the section of this and this particular floor road level backyard just be created i suppose that that should actually flush with this since we are providing an inverted beam and the same uh, i need to flush this okay so edit type and 253.4 is the thickness so 253.4 okay and fine and yeah so that is perfect okay so let me just go to uh, road level and now we are going to create that particular extended plinth on that road level in a such a way that it will have a layer of PCC and then the external layers will be given since it is semi open. So we have to consider the rainfall and the climate and everything. So we need to give the waterproofing layer thicker than this particular flooring okay so let me just go to floor and architectural and road level backyard i'm just going to edit type and we are going to create different floors which will which will uh, serve different functions okay so i'm just going to duplicate this and call this quota and now edit type i'm going to just increase this to let's say 200 so okay and this parking material uh, parking and backyard yeah the material i'm just going to lay the same for this particular floor okay and okay and let me just create one and just finish don't attach and let me just uh, see the section that what is the level difference left to reach up to that so this is that OTA that we created and having that 403.4 so let's elevate that 403.4 and still to reach up to this level in such a way that it should have a, just only the one tile difference we need to add uh, one for one one thirty five point eight. So let me measure this. Yeah, one thirty five point eight. So that particular thickness we will add to the brick beds for waterproofing. So two hundred plus one thirty four point eight. That is three thirty four point eight. That is almost uh, one foot, one foot and some. That is fine. Waterproofing. And again, I need to change this uh, height offset to, let's say, and just move it, this join, and move it to this level. Uh oh. Move and. Yeah. So now we have just one tile difference that is 19mm, 20mm, that's perfect. And let's go to 3D. And yeah, that particular floor has been created. Now we just need to go to road level and copy that and create different floors with different finish material so in this case oh, oh sorry in this case i will just send this to here and that would be here there's going to be a flower bed so we can exclude this part but right now just for the ease i'm going to continue and don't attach and this at a boundary Extend it till here. Pick 
this with this line finish and trim this as well okay and that is going to be duplicate and garden and i'm just going to change the finishing material to grass and we have already defined rabbit already has defined that particular material so okay and just finish i guess must be good tr and okay don't attach and likewise this wooden deck i suppose that edit and we also need to add this wooden deck and right now i'm just providing this much and then for the finished layer we will adjust that just to show you that what i mean so edit type and duplicate this and call this wooden deck and edit type and material i am going to create duplicate call this one wooden deck copy and appearance library flooring and wood and just replace this uh, any of the flooring existing and just duplicate that and call this wooden deck and increase its styling of oh, it's in mm oh my god uh, later first let me just okay and with that this finish don't attach see what i meant is that this particular deck is right now uh, uh, hl it's going inside but for that we will again have to mess with this floor edits and boundary and have this much of inset so that is not important actually so we can adjust it with split lines and apply the same finishing material to that much portion of deck okay so we don't want to mess with the edit boundary and this should actually go to here that's fine don't attach and let's go to 3d and wow so we have this different floorings created okay so now just we need to provide two steps and that i will quickly at, at least uh, let me again go to basement level and change bring this section here and see it and we need to at least provide this much level so then we can uh, divide this 300 mm into two steps of 150 mm fine so at least we will have a pcc or a layer of simple extrusion of this much that is 253.4 okay so road level and let me just create architecture and floor floor architecture and this is going to be or actually let's not create a floor but this time let's use component and modeling place and generic model since it is not going to be seen so generic model and okay and entry steps okay and just a simple extrusion and this much portion okay and just give it uh, 250 let's go to section and see section 2 I guess yeah so just flush okay perfect and now uh, again in that uh, extrusion violin extrusion again create two extrusions and this should be 150 mm finish and not zero but from actually we uh, 
let's let me yeah so we can just move it doesn't matter constrain off and just click this join and move it otherwise you have to enter uh, this particular 253.4 as extrusion start and then add 152 mm to that but you see that instead we can just and copy this and give it this 300 okay sorry not 300 oh but hmm. so you need to flush it the, the finish level of this yeah, so that's fine two steps to 284.5 so this this step will be a little bit smaller actually so that's fine just join geometries join one and two one and two and just select that all and uh, give to materials and give it the ramp material just finish 3d okay perfect and now what we just need to create the flower beds okay so let's again go to road level and let me um, see it in section that what would be the height of that should be now now let's change this un and change this back to feet and fractional inches this is a very important function useful function you can switch between units anytime working with ravage so this is going to be that particular finish level no actually you are going to provide uh, so here we don't have anything so this is going to be that section two okay and from here it should be something three feet high this is one feet ten inches so okay let's create a wall of four feet road level and not road level let's go to yeah road level is fine but where is that yeah fine and what is how much is this six inches so we can provide this for the and that will be actually lift shaft okay and go to architecture and wall and select that lift shaft and actually going to be for the and the top offset from plinth level to three feet so that rounds up to four feet six inches and spine perfect fine. So just the thick walls one press tab and create the entire wall. And just drag this and wall and let me just draft it. Okay and also we have here but here on to this we'll have to give it a offset of uh, we are going to elevate it from print level to the height of unconnected say three foot uh, so one and two and three and four okay and let's go to 3d yeah perfect fine no issues and just road level and one two and three and dm that is mirror uh, and the copy checked on select this center point and just mirror it okay and floor architecture and just going to select a simple uh, 
generic uh, where is that generic 12 inches and edit type and call it duplicate flower bed flower bed okay and just give it a thickness of one inch and material of grass okay okay and let me just create a rectangle and it should be at uh, the road level and with the offset height offset of four feet three inches one and two and likewise for this also one and two delete tr and join and just oh no yes okay and let's go to 3d and absolutely perfect fine so the flower that has been created everything is perfect and fine so what now we need to do is that we need to extend this and manipulate this particular compound wall in such a way that this and this and actually let's select one and press tab so that will select all this all the four walls compound wall and from basement up till plinth level and with the top offset of three feet and perfect only thing is that we need to deduct this, this this much portion and so in that case what i'm going to do is that going to road level i'm just going to drag this all the way from here to this point and this to this point and I'm going to use this wall opening command and create a cut this I'm going to drag okay and this will be a, which you can also manually adjust uh, no this is fine go to 3d and fine the only thing that you will need uh, a ramp or something which would take you up to this finished floor level from road level so that's fine <coughs> the only thing left for this particular floor is that this this washroom portion which will actually have a sunk slab so I guess that in that case we need to select this particular floor and edit boundary and go to road level it is not on road level but yeah that's fine if we can edit it from here as well that's, that's not a problem and it lines and a lot of lines are <laughs> visualized uh, don't attach Mm, let's go to plane level yeah here you can visualize it properly VG VG and imported categories turn it to half tone apply and ok yeah actually this is that edit boundary and quick lines and one and two and i'm going to just consider this storeroom also so i'm going to provide the sun slab there also just to save time and delete delete and delete and delete and delete all of this okay and just finish this and don't attach and just like we created why is this ramp seen in this floor plan? Change it to none. Yeah. Just as we tricked the rabbit while creating this floor in a such a way that it is having so much of layers and its thickness is one foot nine inches something. It is having all these external layers. So 
we are going to follow something do going to do something do something same for this particular wash area which is having going to have the sunk slab at road level but we'll have the finish layers of finish floor levels okay so let's go to road level and here too we can see a lot of things visualize properly and any level is here is clear H H C C and just hide this. Okay. So we need to create the slab here, the sunk slab for the washroom and toilet. We just take this section all the way to here and floor and floor architecture and place it at road level. Yeah, fine offset of zero and edit type and select any of the existing uh, let's select this wooden deck and with all the properties same what we need to just do is that change this wooden deck and duplicate it and call it wash tiles and go to appearance library and just place to give this ceramic tiles and duplicate this one wash tiles okay and four feet let's change it to five feet done apply and okay okay apply and okay we, we did the changes in um, Forgot to duplicate here. Sorry. So just let us start that. And again, floor and floor architecture, and select that any of the flooring. Let's select this quota. And edit type and duplicate this first here, and call it wash tiles, wash floor, or sunk slab. And then edit type and, and oh that material has been lost. No, it doesn't matter. Duplicate this and give it one wash tiles. Appearance library, this and duplicate this and call it one wash tiles. And Five feet. Done. Apply. Okay. And yeah, sunk slab. Fine. Okay. And we need to pick lines. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And just break this. Trim. Trim. Yeah, and just finish. So now let's see that bag being created. Uh, oh, sorry. <laughs> but with you need to give it a height offset of height offset of let's say edit type and again un and change this to millimeters okay okay and what is this 538.2 so road level and 538.2 okay so now you see that that sunk slab has been created which has the waterproofing a lot of waterproofing approximately one foot around one foot of 300 mm of waterproofing big beds okay the only thing is that we need to join this geometry because this is right now this particular beam is in part of that floor you see this in section one so what i will do is that 
this modify and join geometry and join this to this but you need to switch order and select that floor and select that particular beam where is it okay undo it on yeah join geometry and join this to this join switch order uh -oh, why can't i select it maybe i'm joining the wrong join this to this yeah that's okay switch order why can't i select it Rabbit, rabbit sometimes behave very weird. So again, last try, join, join, and switch order, and select this, and very carefully select this. Select this and select this line. Yeah, fine. So let's see. Okay, so you just extend this. This is the level of perfection while 3D modeling also. Okay. So you see that after hard work of two hours, almost two hours, we have been able to just create length level. And let me just uh, give a rating at this two portion and create a road and just finish up the lecture for today. Road level and architecture and railing, sketch path. I'm just going to select simple glass panel bottom fill and place it at uh, where should I place length level thick lines this this redo highlight exit out of this command the lines and press escape and then select this line and drag it all the way to this point and let's see that where it's going to create a railing line of these things. oh yeah so we need to get rid of this and first create this railing and you see your copy and copy it from this point and place it here doesn't matter and then just select this edit path take it all the way and it's finished okay and 3d So, so, this happens. so again uh, this is that length level so we need to add offset offset 6 inch and that will take a bit high 3 inch now that's okay same for this this will have different no this is perfectly placed no matter H, H and why is this modify and join create select the structure and select this oh, sorry join and select the structure and select this yeah H R perfection should be there fine and quickly let's go to road level and architecture and components model in place generic model okay and call it road and let's give it an extrusion I'm 
I'm just creating. Delete TR. Delete and TR. Okay. Fine, and this should be given the road material, but I don't think so that we have defined it. So we need again to duplicate one road copy appearance library and site work asphalt asphalt grey appearance duplicate one road. Is fine, yeah. Apply and okay, and just give it an extrusion of something like, yeah, 150 mm, six inches, or uh, let's say 100 mm. Fine, and let's go to 3D, edit, and perfect. So, you see that from your road, you have an access to ramp. And from this road, you need to provide steps. One step is fine, not an issue. And if you wish to, then you can further extend this one, two, three, and four. And now let's send UN and again back to feet and fractional inches. Fine. One, two, and three. And give it an offset of five feet. MA that is match properties just like AutoCAD and yes we will have a gate one step over here okay fine so now we will continue further and this was the hardest part and from now things will be much easier and from tomorrow we will continue building the walls of this okay so practice everyone and get up to this point and let me know if you have any doubts or queries and till then bye so let's continue further with the modeling part constructing and elevating the columns the beams that is the structural framing and the wall onto this particular plinth floor okay and for that essentially i need to take this plinth floor to uh, the finished floor of that particular uh, this surface so for that I actually need to go to this plan or the section and just measure that what is the finished floor and for that also essentially I need to change this preferred units to millimeters just for conveniency and measure this and this 101 yeah fine so while going to 3D, just select this AutoCAD plan and it is already on plinth floor. What you need to do is just give it an offset of 101. So we have AutoCAD plan on that finished surface of plinth level and we have something to reference to. Okay, so now the first step is that we need to take the columns. We need to elevate the columns. Okay, and how easy it is with Rabbit. So just select all of this, then filter very powerful command and important command check none and I will select the architectural columns and the structural columns and just apply and OK so that will select all the architectural and structural columns and has, having the base basement level the base level is basement level and the top level is plinth level I will change it to first floor and with that we have all our columns elevated till first floor okay and likewise what we need to do is that select all, all of this and filter and check none and just select the structural framing and OK. And with that structural framing OK, I will say that copy to clipboard and paste align to selected levels and uh, paste it to first floor. So we have all our beams joining the columns that is the structural framing on the first floor. Okay. So the only thing is that we need to get rid of few beams and add few beams. Here also we don't need beam, I guess. Okay, so for that, again, I need to go to 
I need to take this particular. Uh, but that is actually, yeah, sorry. Uh, this AutoCAD plan to, let's say, the first floor. And yeah. So if you see this in south elevation, then essentially right now these beams are just because if you remember that we have the in this this beams are been copied from this level that is this road level and we place those inverted beams onto that particular level and that's why if you just right now see it in section or elevation then you will notice that the beams are placed above that particular level which should actually be flushed and this top surface of that beam should be at this level but that's okay fine it will be it is actually good so we can directly go to first floor and uh, with that AutoCAD plan on the first floor turn it to half cone and we can just see that what all beams do we require and what all do we not okay so I think we don't need this beam so let me just TR and split line then get rid of that beam and this is going to be the curtain wall which is not having load above so i don't think that we need to add beams onto the surface but we need beam here yeah and that's fine because this is overlooking and also i guess that we need to trim this yeah fine and trim this as well and with that i guess everything is fine and just let's take this back to plinth level and yeah so what we need to do is that we just need to join this geometry since we have copied it from the first floor and also if you will see if you close the notice then this particular column is actually this floor needs to cut this much volume of column so this is a bit of joining work and so I, let me just go to first floor again and join this structural framing that is the beam first quickly this is joined this is also joined and wherever you feel this is also joined okay so this is done and now uh, let's go to 3d again and let's select all of this and change its Z justification to top and highlighted elements are joined but do not intersect yeah. so that is perfect absolutely perfect okay so what we just need to do is that join uh, the columns with that structural framing and also join this external plaster layer and deduct that from this much portion of beam but before that i would just like to say that this and this and also the structural columns yeah and just isolate category oh, so it doesn't uh, didn't select the just press undo and first select the structural column and then this external plaster layer and this floor okay uh, what's that the floor it's, um, entire floor and just isolate element isolate category and yeah fine and let's quickly uh, without wasting the time just join all this and so yeah, as soon as you join you see that this black line will, will highlight showing the edges of the column so that's actually essential so see if you just see the skeleton view of this then now you can properly visualize it okay that is essential uh, that is important to be done or else You cannot say that it is perfectly crafted. Okay.
Of course, a column will grow throughout, but it's just that at the floor, the reinforcement of the beam, column and floor, everything will overlap. And yes, I guess that I have joined all the columns and yeah, this was left and all the columns edges are being seen. Okay, fine. So now let's turn on HR and before applying the external plaster layer to this beam, let me quickly join. Now you guys uh, need to have some patience. Until I join this, it will not take much of time. What needed is just your patience. And you see, this much layer of plaster has been discarded and is adding only this much plaster layer. So, this will help in quantification. It's nothing else. That's why it is important to join all the geometries. Uh oh, sorry. Join. Yeah, and likewise join this as well. Yeah, that is fine. Still, the plaster layer needs to be added. To all the exposed beam so we we'll have to do this again let it join yeah so everything is perfect now and what we need to do is that we need to add the beams the architectural beams to this structural beams okay so for that i'll go to architecture and we already have defined that and where is it mm, beam wall yeah and okay again i need to switch between metric and imperial but if rabbit is there then that's not a problem so wall and beam wall and i would like to say that i would like to go from uh, length level and the top constraint should be first floor and the base offset should be eight foot six inches and that will give it a height of the top offset should be zero and that will give it an unconnected height of one feet six inches okay and if you remember that already we have added one inch half inch to both and this beam wall uh, so i think that we need to select the other beam wall which has the plaster layer on both the end both the sides uh, okay if not then let's just duplicate this and duplicate and beam wall and let's be very specific say first floor since uh, this particular floor wouldn't having was not having so much of exposed beams only a couple of them were there so we didn't add the external plaster layer on this edge so i will just uh, insert one and down and copy and paste and this should be half inch as well and with that uh, yeah fine so this is not an issue now so one feet one inch bit thickness and the height i guess that not eight feet uh, six inches but eight feet five inches and let's just see what happens and pick lines and just going to pick this line escape out and just press space 
and go to 3D. Let's just try that for one now, right? Just yeah, and doesn't matter here, there is an external plaster layer of that column, it will merge with that. Let's see if it appears perfect. I need to check it from all ends. Oh, I cannot see it. Just HI. HI. And yeah, okay. What I just need to do is that modify and join. And yeah, perfect. So the, even if, uh, if the, there is a coping, uh, let's say that if coping, not coping, sorry. If, the, if this particular beam is extruding out of the column, then it's in uh, bottom surface will have the plaster layer. Uh, just because we added this half inch plaster sorry not half inch plaster here but we added a base offset of 8.5 i guess that 8.5.5 so uh oh sorry 8.5.5 mm, 8.5 and half so how to type half i and half 8.5.5 yeah so that's perfect so the half half inch layer of plaster has been added on the bottom surface okay so let's quickly do that for all the beams and just need to stay tuned and keep watching the video and i will quickly do it for all
and you see that this is the perfect anatomy that how a floor is joined to column and column to beam and what are the external wrapping layers and how do they join and how the construction happens on site okay so now quickly without wasting time uh, let's start adding the walls and for that i need to go to the floor plan of this plinth level let me just uh, oh, this column is floating somewhere in air so let me just change this to plinth level and also this to plinth level as well yeah fine and we'll have a good railing onto this point just like this okay so let's just go to where plinth level and start constructing the walls and cc and okay hl oh oh see i again made a mistake i guess oh, oh sorry so plinth level and this floor this particular floor edit boundary and will come only to here this point and yes and say don't attach and this particular floor uh, edit boundary and pick lines and pick this line okay and trim this with this this to this and just select one Just finish. Oh, dear. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Okay. And PD. And yeah, that's that's better. And this actually should go to oh, level. No, yeah, so the boundary and take it to this point. Yeah, fine. Okay, so now let's uh, quickly start constructing the walls. Our enter and uh, so this is fine. Okay, HL architecture and wall, and this will not be. This will be the main wall 9 inch and it will go from plinth level with base offset of 0 and up to the first level. Yeah, fine. And we will snap to this point only. Core face exterior and sorry, not this point, this point. And we will draw the walls only where needed. And automatically it will highlight it more Yeah, that's fine. So it has joined with the external plaster layer of this. So, if I just change this to fine, yeah. So, CC, okay, R enter, okay. So, again, HL, and fine. Let's draw all walls of 9 inch, and we can just pick lines also. Press tab. And through this point, yeah. walls, pick lines, and I did walls overlap. Yeah, you, you know why this error is popping up because this we have a wall here also. So, for all that, we need to join again. But okay, that's okay that you can do it. And this should go all the way to here. We should join. I'm oh, sorry, not this but The external plaster should join with this. Okay, let's not waste time on that. Architecture and wall with lines and architecture walls with lines. 
we can actually take this one but you no know, here there is a column so put names and select the entire oh my god let's just delete it and let's manually draw the ball so we save a time let's just see it in 3d you now the what we are constructing is like the popping from it you know Okay, yeah, I got it. Because all of this uh, walls have the top constraint going up to this floor level, so again, we need to select this walls that we have just that we just drew, and all of our so all of that should have a base of the top offset of negative 18 inches, or say 19 inches. Yeah, okay, perfect. So now it won't pop up any error and what we need to do is just modify and join all this this wall to this this wall to this that you can do it later but uh, only thing was that i just was I was just wondering that why is that error popping up again and again and wall and wall architecture wall and with that top offset of minus 19 inch since we have added the beam architectural beam with half inch of plaster yeah, half inch so minus one feet 6.5 is accurate dimension See, so now it didn't show any error, fine. So for all these walls also, minus one feet, 6.5. And we should connect to it here. That's better. And now it is perfect. Okay, and wall. Actually, have this wall join, and we will join and deduct structural columns and this wall again, structural column and this wall, uh -oh. structural column and this wall. same way here also we need to deduct that structural column and wall now uh, architecture and wall and just draw this wall starting from plinth level and we'll go up till so because let's uh, ignore this for right now and let us draw a simple Popping error at 
Oh yeah, so here there was already a beam. So already the beam has been added and fine. So link level again and wall and draw the wall only where needed. Don't consider the beam. joining perfectly but don't know for some reason it is showing popular error quickly draw the four and a half inch wall as well and I guess I have already defined that it is there so this won't have an offset but they don't have a beam at this position but this do have so wall sorry this was supposed to trim with this and here we have an internal wall this tab fine this will go to and also this will go up so because we don't have a beam over there yeah so that is it and we have here to work on zero. Okay. Now let's just go to 3D and see. Okay. What we just need to do is that join all the balls. So let me select this. Um, B 
beam wall and this particular wall and just isolate that degree and so we will get to know that what all where where do we have an issue and where do we need to join in here modify maybe because this uh, half inch plaster layer was joining conflicting with that particular thing so that's why it was popping up that error again and again i guess Okay, and for all the walls, we have one homogeneous surface, and this is the mesh, the co uh, what do we call mesh that of the projection of the beam, kopri. Uh, in Gujarati, we call it kopri. This HR, and yeah, so perfect. And don't worry about this uh, particular wall, curtain wall will join it, uh, will join last and this and the staircase, both of them will join in last. But we actually we need to have a wall here, first floor, sorry not first floor, tent level and architecture and wall, 1.62. Just draw a wall, press tab, and not this, but main wall, main wall, nine inch. Definitely, we'll have an opening onto this, but that is for later. Post this, that we need to construct that wall. this and join this with this and you see one homogeneous surface without a single error and a single line okay see perfect everything is so perfect now okay so let's uh, quickly add openings to this and finish up this floor and here i guess something was left to join that is this column needs to deduct yeah so okay this lines will definitely because this is a different structural element and this is a different structural element but that will mean that is not joined this is not an error okay you don't get confused with that and fine okay let's again go to lint level and let's start adding those windows and openings to that particular floor and before that let me just add one quickly without before i forget uh, railing and that too on a plinth level and yes pick lines and draw it all the way to this and just finish Okay, and here too, uh, you can add a parapet also, but right now I'm just adding a railing architecture and railing, quick lines, and here too, oh, railing, quick lines. Okay. 
here let's add a simple railing and do a rectangular 3D and yeah see perfect and this too has the same thing and if you closely observe each and every junction then you see that exactly it is appearing perfect at each place only uh, we do have a problem at some places but that's okay just modify and join geometries join this with this okay yeah so otherwise rest everything is fine okay so now let's quickly start adding openings to this particular floor and let me just go to plinth floor plinth level and architecture and windows and whenever you click window you will just find this one fix window uh, because uh, you might not have loaded the different types of windows that comes with Revit so don't worry in that case you just need to go to load family and in libraries in English Imperial uh, under windows section you will find all different types of window that you want to add okay so from this list only I have added a couple of windows to this project browser to this properties palette uh, sorry to this project browser family section so just to save time okay so uh, we'll just start adding windows to this and for that I guess that I need to see the AutoCAD plan WF WF wireframe yeah fine and before adding windows first let's add doors and just like windows I have also added doors to this and this door is 3 foot 7 and a half what dimension is that 3 foot 9 inch yeah fine and then this door this tab Two feet six inches the washroom doors and the bedroom doors three foot okay so this wash area might also be two feet six inches i'm just assuming the standard size that is this is uh, three foot nine inch three foot and two feet six inches that are three different types of doors we have so we go to architecture and just like windows i have already uh, i have also loaded doors so for this uh, i'm going to use this uh, double x here and I'm just going to edit type and duplicate it and call it three feet nine inches and change its height to beam bottom is eight feet six inches so i would just uh, i just want the lintel at eight feet yeah that's fine and the width to not five feet but three feet nine inches hope that it works oh actually to the double door so we don't have a space for a double door onto this This left and let's add it for now and this will go here and yeah we just flip and see it in 3D and okay there is a minor glitch and error but that can always be worked out so we'll just leave it as it is right now and proceed on further you can just change the size of it a little bit and adjust it or load a different altogether a different door for this door and i'm going to select the interior door that is three foot six inches and i'm going to edit type and duplicate it and call it three foot and width to three foot and that could be essentially the 
door for bedroom door fine and then doors and single flush that could have 30 by 84 that is i guess perfect uh, height to be 7 foot and width is 2 feet 5 so that's perfect okay, so let's just quickly add that so one and also two three and four and we have all our doors loaded only thing is that we need to drag this wall in here so we can flush this door at this edge and fine okay this is a seat in 3d we don't have much doors so that's fine that's space and yeah okay so now let's add windows also we can you know but that for later let's first let add windows to this particular thing and what is the width of this window 8 foot this is also 8 foot this is Six foot, and I guess this is also six foot. Okay, and this is six foot. This two is six foot. Okay. Make sure four feet. So actually we are going to have a couple of curtain walls and certain windows which will actually act as a door for the access to the informal spaces outside for example in this case here we will have a sliding window which will actually act as a door and here we will have a curtain wall here also we will have a curtain wall and this too Uh, this this too is a bigger window which will act which will actually is a sliding window and here we don't have any access so that's fine and let, let me just quickly add that and this two are going to be the sliding window so architecture and window and let me see if i have some sliding window Yeah, this is the sliding window double, and this is the sliding window four. So, sliding window four, I'm going to add to this particular location. Edit type and duplicate it, and call it six feet. And the width to six feet, and height to. Width to six feet and height to if three. So this has an instance parameter that is the seal height of three feet has been given. And since it is a kitchen window, so three foot and the, if to match a lintel of eight feet, we need to give a height of five feet. So that is three plus five as eight foot. And okay, let's just add that two windows to here and one to here. Flip between the directions. Oh, no, sorry, this one is perfect. And here we will have a fixed window. So let's add a fixed window. And let's add this two feet. And what is the size? I forgot. 
four feet so window and fix window double hung yeah so let's add this and edit type and duplicate it and call it four feet and again i need to change the width to four feet and uh, the seal height is three feet so the height would be five feet okay let's add that And where else do we have that window um, nowhere okay here we'll have uh, so this is the eight feet and window and we have this window slider with trim which can actually be added to this Where is that? Yeah, uh, slider with trim, and already this eight foot slider window has been already defined by me, which has this seal height of one feet three inches, and height to six point five, and yeah, everything perfect. I already designed it. I'll just add that window to this and this too. But that would be six feet. Uh, don't worry, I also have a six feet. So one and two. And of course, this is the eight foot. So eight feet. And yeah. Okay, and here we'll have a curtain wall. So. Yeah, the only thing that needs to add it is just a lower window or to this window and lures yeah, 16 by 24 and that's perfect size. Uh, let's change it to six feet sill height and default sill height and this is an instance parameter so we can change it directly from here. The width to be two feet. And height, where is the height? Height, I guess. Yeah, this is a height. Height width by two feet by two feet. And just place it here. So let's go to three now. And where is that going to be? Length level, seal height of six feet. Yeah, fine. So let's go to three and see. Yeah. So you see that all of your windows are added perfectly and this window can actually act as a door also. And this too, we can change it to So only thing is that we need to add a curtain wall here and here. So that we'll do later. So now let's just construct the floor for first floor. And some problems always are left unseen. So it doesn't matter. Just join and join. Yeah. So this to and yes, of course, this master line should. Yeah, fine. Okay, and what else? Yeah, this needs to be one face. So join this. Uh oh, sorry. Uh, join this with this. Yeah. Okay. What else? Uh, 
this is the living room i guess and uh, actually i just go to print now than to the indian setting and this wall will only come up to here at this point but it doesn't matter we can add an opening to this uh, uh, and let's do that so just edit profile hl and draw a circle it's just a random circle you can manually adjust it later but right now the purpose is just that i want to show you that how can you and just okay and yes you have a see through and this wall is now joined with the floor so uh, cc and i need to uh, r enter i need to select this wall join and this floor and this wall yeah so now you can see the line okay you can extend it and make it a bit bigger as per your wish you can also add glazing to this particular opening do whatever you want okay yeah fine and here also i guess we need to add some opening so let's let's see that what windows i have and yes so yeah let's add this window so it's plant level ceiling height is 3 feet that doesn't appear to be at 3 feet it's fine let me just see that what is its width and let's increase the width to something big and that will automatically increase its height as well built in parameters just click okay and yeah well, that's too big and it just it bit and fine this is just an application which i wanted to share and it absolutely depends on you that what you want to add for example if this is the staircase wall and if you want to add a profile and add few slits to it this random replacing and co and place it m enter and place it near and co and copy multiple times 1 2 and 3 and the four lap it is i guess we will have two more so just copy and from this end to this end yeah and let's just finish this and you see you have created that slits so that actually depends entirely on your design that what type of opening you want and what you want but i just showing you the command how can you use and now you can just place a simple piece of glass to this slits and that i will show you while we design this curtain wall okay so now let's quickly add continue uh, with the modeling part and let's add the first floor just select this floor and you see that everything is technically perfect uh, worked out perfectly worked out then you see that it saves a lot of time working with ravage so with this selected you just need to copy to clipboard and and paste and align to selected levels and go to first floor and yeah just click okay so you see that automatically that floor has been created on the first floor or the only thing that you need to edit it a bit and while going to first floor and 
right now you cannot see something uh, i mean anything but that's okay again let's go to plinth level take this autocad plan and first let's align it properly l i like this um, what could be the snap point yeah this and l i no but here there is no so let me just l i and this point and modify and align one and this particular face without the plaster line so now that autocad plan has been perfectly referenced in position okay so we just have a cross check of that and this is the beam yeah that's fine and so this is the wall and okay we have a problem here this is not matching oh no that is just the position of door you need to and this wall in this case will be is complete we do not have this okay that we can adjust it later and what we need to do is just go to first floor I'm going to 3D. I'm going to take this AutoCAD plan and again to first floor, and with that same offset of 101, which in Imperial system is showing this ugly fraction. That is, that is fine. Okay, so uh, this particular floor plan, the AutoCAD plan, has been referenced to the finish, finish level of the first floor. Okay, so you can quickly adjust between your plan and let's go to first floor and yes so this is the open terrace and so we need to edit boundary of this floor plate and snap it to this point and yes of course this is going to be a cutout and likewise TR and just join this clients and the floor line which you always snap to should be without the plaster line okay so don't make that mistake so always snap to the AutoCAD plan, which doesn't have that plaster line. Okay. And yes, so everything seems perfect. The only thing that we need to add in this case, TR and join TR. So, okay. This is the perfect floor, first floor, and let's just finish it. Don't attach. Let's go to 3D. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. And I think I made a mistake by reducing that column because, um, yeah, but we can add a different column. Classical column to Roman style, ethnical style column. I have it in my library, so we can add it. We can add that here. Okay, so that's fine. And I guess this this particular edge needs to be this end. Don't attach. And yes. And for the toilet, again, we are just going to select this. And before that, I just want to make you clear that uh, even though you have added this particular floor at, uh, at the junctions, like uh, where, where the beam is meeting with this floor, where the beam is touching this floor, you need to just have a cross check whether the geometries are joined or not. 
So let's go to section and let's have an overall check that whether everything is fine uh, from so you see this is not joined so you need to cut sections from multiple places and just make sure that things are joined properly and yeah, this is fine okay so you see that uh, you need to join this to this concrete and also to this and yeah so Concrete with concrete and concrete with this external plaster layer. And also in section two, let's just see. So everything seems perfect so far. Just need to drag this a bit up and join and join this structural element, the structural element. And yes. So what we did in plan for the, if you remember for the this particular plinth level slab we are doing it out now in section just for the ease okay so you need to go to basement and, or let's say to uh, where is that plinth level and take section from various different positions uh, junctions to make sure that everything is fine and yeah so see this door is going up to the unfinished level so again we need to elevate it so giving it a seal height of 101 mm yeah so i remember that and yeah so perfect <coughs> sorry first floor Join this concrete with this, this with this, this to the external plaster layer as well, this to this, and this to this. And yeah, okay. Now, oh, the only thing left is that um, this uh, should have the base offset of 5.5 here okay, and likewise here as well 5.5 likewise here as well So even though you see that we had copied all this uh, architectural columns and the structural columns from plinth level to first floor, but as soon as we copied, you see that its constraint has changed. So that is a very beautiful part of Ravit that even though this floor has been copied from the first floor, it shows that and if even if you ever want to apply a different finishing material, then just go to edit type and yes, of course, for the quantification, we need to duplicate this. So duplicate and call this first floor okay and rest everything for now let's just keep it as it is then go to 
plinth level and take this section oh sorry take this section here just having a cross check of whether everything is joined perfectly and yes plinth level and finally at this end yeah so we need to again have a cross check in the horizontal section everything is joined perfectly or not load level and take it to this end and see so here we have left to join Also the structure and also the plaster layer and yes I'm sorry but uh, in the time how to do this let's select all the beams together and give it a base offset of 5.5 so that would make the plaster layer only 12 mm and then join and join this to this and wherever needed just do the needful and i hope that everything is fine yeah so here is that toilet block i guess This wall, which is this wall? Oh, okay. Yeah, so that will definitely go up till the unfinished lab level. Okay, doesn't matter. So, one last thing left for this particular floor is that we need to add this particular toilet, toilet drop slab to this level and that would be also very easy and just may just press UN and switch between again metric and yes and just select this floor and optical clipboard and align paste to align to selected levels and place that first floor okay. drop an error yeah but, but because that but doesn't matter uh, we will adjust it and place it to a desired location while going into the first section and right now it is showing this this particular head uh, this particular height we need to flush it at beam bottom this drop slab so what we need to do in that case is first of all turn this to zero and also uh, even after turning it to zero we have this difference of let's say 68.3 doesn't matter just go and give it a height offset of 68.3 that is finished floor level and yeah see so now we have this uh, you will realize when you will see it in 3d you will have this one tile drop okay so let's quickly uh, modify and join geometries and join this and of course join this to the beam oh sorry concrete with concrete join and concrete with concrete yeah and join and switch order select this and select this yeah, perfect absolutely perfect and also we need to join this with this and again get, get rid of that external plaster beam ball beam ball uh, don't need because it will 
going to get with him. Okay, but uh, I hope that it's not going all the way to. Let's just have a cross check. Oh, it's going to all the way. So just for if I delete this, then that will remove from all. So let's just keep it as it is for now. Uh, if you can join it, then that would be best. But if you cannot, then um, join elements. Mm, join uh, the blaster with this. Okay, uh, let's just forget it anyway, it's hidden, so not an issue. And join this to this. Mm -hmm. Which is this wall? section getting cut from um, link flow and yeah this this is that wall this is that external wall that did join but this does not join new wall uh, yeah okay so we need to drag it to this location and we have to this. because we have a drop flap so this door this wall will stop at this particular flap level okay fine and now let's go to 3d and let's quickly edit its profile and bring it to the right location edit boundary and let's go to first floor and yes just join this with this get rid of all these lines oh, sorry and this to this this is the beam no this is the bomb and don't worry about this niche of course then we'll add wall to automatically detect that much portion of the slab but that would be technically correct instead of just taking this profile in to the inner edge so that is not appropriate and fine and yeah so let's just finish uh -oh. finish don't attach and yes I go to 3d and then you see that how perfectly we have added that drop slab with one tile thickness with the finished floor of that first floor okay so everything is fine and the only glitch is that if i go to this plinth level if i take this section then you know that this wall this particular wall is no but that we took to that desired location so yeah so that's it and this is absolutely technically correct so just just see if i go to 3d and take any of the peripheral walls and just drag it then you need to see that this this line uh, will hide because of that external plaster layer that will wrap okay so this is the charm of rabbit working with rabbit because we'll draw one wall here with an external plaster layer and then we'll join it with the floor so that would be perfect okay and uh, i guess we why did we remove the beam from this end uh, of course we need that so just go to first floor again and take this beam all the way to here this end yeah and join elements okay and not uh, for um, length level and let's go to 3d only okay and likewise also let's drag structure i hope that let's hh this wall and is the structural column 
taken out no this is still so drag it and drag this structural column as well and then tr and tr with this perfect and you don't need to deduct it from the structural elements that have already did that might have already been what you need to just do is that take this beam ball and join it with this tr and tr and perfect so you see that it's so much less efforts we can work technically so sound and hr yeah fine so don't worry about this you know that as soon as i will drag this wall up the layer of plaster will be wrapped and okay that's perfect here we need one column but i don't want to add that regular columns we'll add some different column onto this but that later okay so that's all for this first floor i guess so just practice and get up to this point and let me know if you have any doubts or queries and we'll again meet tomorrow fine bye and keep working with rabbit bye and i suppose that uh, let me just see the floor plan of this and yeah so see uh, here also we have an attached toilet with the master bedroom so I guess that you need to manipulate this particular floor and you are drop slab just like this but I guess that with this you can do that on your own and I think that I should continue with the modeling part now okay so the first step is to take all the columns up as per the hierarchy of construction I guess I moved something wrong yeah so let's cancel it yeah fine and select all of this and just filter check none and say that columns and structural columns apply and okay and let's say that base level to level one and now let's take the top constraint to terrace level and yeah so see that this has moved all the columns in place and this column yeah okay uh, it's just this be what it is right now we'll change it later and i guess that this has become uh, the lower terrace and yeah so this columns will be stopped at the parapet parapet level okay this columns will stop this four so just select all four of them and we cannot select it but Structural column and architectural column. S A S A O. Oh, oh. oh, there are multiple of them. So just select this four. Unselect this level and let's change its first floor and the top offset to three foot. no issues fine so the next step is that we need to add the structural framing again that is the beams so i will just select all of this and filter and check none and just say that structural framing okay and with that i will say that copy to clipboard align to selected levels and i would like to add them on the terrace floor okay no issues so what we need to do is that just uh, i 
again i need to see the autocad plan so yeah so this beam will stop here at this point okay this two columns will go up i suppose uh, actually uh, let's see okay we will just we 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 just uh, we need to delete this beam and trim this beam yeah okay fine and let's add yeah but before that i guess that again i need to join this floor with the column elevated so what i will do is that i will select this floor and this two deselect this and say that isolate category ah uh, isolate not ls element uh oh floor and press control and press select all of this and press shift and deselect this and say that isolate category yeah okay so this columns at certain places are still needs to be joined you will see as you can see that so just join and quickly let me just do the neat pull yeah okay i suppose that they are joined we get few junctions for example this join whenever you can't see this black line so that column is not okay and just hr yeah that's fine so let's add the beam wall to this beams so that is the beam wall first floor and again let's be very specific so beam wall terrace floor terrace floor yeah and all the other constraint and properties will remain the same okay and just pick lines uh oh wall and beam wall first floor edit type duplicate beam wall terrace floor uh is already in use so architecture wall and beam wall terrace floor yeah fine just need to change the constraints that is this should be first floor and with base offset of 8 foot 6 inches and this should be terrace level yeah and 8 foot 6 point uh, 5 point 5 inches and add a plaster layer so pick lines select which will come up till here so one and two this and this this and this and this and this and yeah okay just uh, flip the direction press space and flip the direction for all of the beams architectural beams that we added now just what we need to do is select select them and drag it to the desired so top and 
this should go all the way to here this point and likewise um, beam this should go all the way till this point uh oh sorry or let's just actually tr and make sure that we are selecting the beam wall terrace floor and the beam wall not the structural framing but press tab and beam wall terrace floor yeah so it will be joined and press space again and where else um, this tr and watch here beam wall terrace floor and trim this and no actually this is not so i need to drag it manually i guess so again go to top and drag it till this point actually just to this point here yeah. and likewise select this uh, and drag it till this point okay and what else yeah this is supposed to be this is this and this too so top and go all the way to this end and select this beam wall yeah drag it to this point and here i guess we need one so it lines and with that constraints press yeah okay so S A S A and select all of that and uh, let's change this to six and that was the reason that was earlier when we were elevating this particular walls that was popping up an error because this walls are going from the from the designated level to eight foot six inches so I don't want to pass a layer at that end no but there will be there will be niches created because the wall is only 9 inch so yeah this is proper so let it be <laughs> sorry so what we need to do is that just need to join all of that modify and again stay tuned until I do the needful is remaining okay and fine so now let's start constructing the walls so I need to go to AutoCAD, AutoCAD plan the first floor and let me quickly create the walls architecture walls and this time main wall and from first floor with base offset of zero up till terrace floor fine also we can directly copy it from uh, first floor the walls but 
I would just like to draw them. This will be the internal wall, so let's forget it and we will have one, yeah, but we'll add railing here, only walls, one wall over here. And this will stop here. Yeah, I know you have a problem with me, but we will sort that later. Rabbit has some personal problems with me and that's why he's behaving like this. But don't worry. He won't do the same with you guys. And let's add the internal walls. Wall and 4.5 and just pick lines. Tab. And okay. And yeah, this is perfect. Walls, declines, declines, and space, space. Fine. And this this will have just a parapet wall. So wall and three foot. And that will be nine inch. Oh, sorry, not bail offset, but top constraint to unconnected, and that should be only three foot of height. And till here. Okay, this this wall will go all the way to. Actually, we need to decide that when we need to stop this curtain wall. So that will decide the height of this particular wall. So let's go to 3D. And, and yes, uh, I guess that uh, this wall, we will have a wall over here, a full wall. And so in that case, this column will go This. Both of them will go all the way to terrace level. Oh, sorry, uh, top offset. I guess I gave them so zero. Okay, and we will have a wall over here. So uh, let's go to first floor and wall and main wall yeah but uh, not unconnected and we'll take it up to the first floor sorry terrace level okay and this particular beam 3d and this beam will stop here i guess This should have a top offset of say what what is the 
for this particular walls what is the constraints so see this wall all of this walls uh, should stop at sa so, sorry so this this wall this particular wall will stop at minus 1 foot uh, 6.5 and a half at beam bottom so yes a uh, plaster layer on and flick and you can just join it yeah and uh, all this walls also i guess s a i need to be select this and only select that and yeah that is going up to the so the top constraint should be to first floor and top offset top offset uh, top constraint to the next level is fine yeah i let it overlap yeah fine. Okay, and I have taken this wall as well, but we'll do that later. I will drop that down and eight foot, uh, one foot, uh, six and a half minus. Okay, that's perfect. And all this one and two, this will have only the. Unconnected height of three foot per parapet. Also, this wall, M A match properties. This. Okay, and this will stop here. Okay. So now it is perfect. So what we need to do is that we need to the next step is that uh, yeah we don't need to join this that's okay so this wall copy to clipboard and paste align to selected levels and add it on the first floor as well yeah so perfect okay. There will be a beam over here, a beam, I suppose, I'm not sure. Anyway, let's join this, join and okay. And is any, anywhere left to join? No. The only thing is that you need to join the wall surfaces and that's not an issue. You can always join that very easily. You have one homogeneous surface. Join and join this with this. Also this to this. And perfect. this to this yeah uh oh yeah. this to this
all sorry join and this surface seems to be joined so why it is showing that line join ah oh, yeah so that was not joined likewise this as well so it is very important that what surface you select and what you join in order to move smoothly you need to be very precise and see you have joined all the surfaces and you have one single surface this face is left I guess something not joined yet join and okay join and join yeah join and join perfect two lines are still okay ah, let's just forget it yeah so likewise this also will be very simple but yeah, so okay fine okay finally left is that I guess um, what is the constraint for this so terrace level so why is this not up to terrace level and yeah we don't have a beam over here so this will actually go to the top okay and automatically joins you know fine so not an issue and this beam will stop here this wall are actually here and, and at, no actually at this level I guess that this beam will come here okay so let me just select both of this and go to top and move move from this point to this point okay and yes I guess that oh, oh sorry so this should uh, basically stop here so I guess that we need to break that so split lines and split both of this the wall also and column also so uh, sorry the wall that is the beam wall also and the column also column i stop Let's uh, actually get rid of this, delete.
let's not just split but drag it all the way here this end and this two at this end and yeah Okay, and join and join this with this. Okay. And yeah, this also needs to be stopped here and we will need a one uh, a structural framing and the wall at, let's select both of them, control C and yeah, control A and copy it to this location. That is from this point to this point. Okay. And I guess that we just copied the wall. Also, we need to copy the structural framing. So, let's have. Okay. Then uh, copy and copy it from this point to this point, and yeah, so now it is perfect. But we don't have a column there, do we have? No, we don't have a column. We only have a beam. Because the AutoCAD plan HI, so we don't have a column there. So get rid of that column. 3D, and we'll just have beam. rectangular beam so join yeah perfect and tr and join this structural framing to this and likewise join this external plaster layer to this sorry Join this with this. I guess delete. Okay, fine. And this will join with this wall. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> oh my god. Mm -hmm. and that is absolutely perfect the only thing that we need to drag this plaster layer all the way to here and yeah okay it's fine And now let's just one and two and copy to clipboard and line to selected levels and first floor. Okay. Fine. We have a Beam wall terrestrial over here, but we don't have here. Architecture. 
your wall beam wall terrace floor and base constraint to 8 foot 5.5 and yes it climbs press tab uh, space not tab modify and join geometries modify and select the beam the structural framing space yeah uh, not that this join and So join this face with this. And this is joined, but it's just that, uh, let me say, switch order and select this and select this. And yeah, okay. Fine. And what left is to add the two internal walls to this particular room so again let's go to first floor and architecture wall and this time I will select this 4.5 pick lines uh oh sorry undo and walls and 4.5 and yeah so from first floor with offset of zero to terrace floor one and two just space and flip the direction and it didn't add the plaster one yeah that's added fine so this will go all the way to this end and that's done okay and it has deducted the beam from that fine mm. So uh, here also, I guess this wall will come to this end. No, that is a balcony. So not an issue. That is the balcony. That is a part of the balcony. So let's just add simple railing to that. And at first floor, yeah, from here to. here to here finish and architecture and railing same railing from here to here finish and railing from here to here Let's uh, select both of this and take it a little bit inside. Exact location you can decide and just tentatively moving it. Okay. And that needs to be elevated to the finished floor at 101 mm, I remember. And yeah, that's perfect. Okay, and now let's add quickly the openings to this. So let me go to the first floor plan and door and single flash door for this mm, internal wall and contact gap. This is the toilet door and this too 
this three i guess uh, door uh, sorry no door and uh, interior three foot one and two and cab and three okay Uh, because of its frame size and its uh, making, uh, having the this lifts, shift this wall a little bit, let's say one inch. So yeah, so you can have a perfect, not, a, not, not, not even one inch, more I guess. But that's not important. Just, uh, you can always reposition that, just modify and align. And this is okay okay fine and here in now we need to add windows so I will go to architecture and window and I will select this uh, sliding where is it sliding uh, folding like six foot, six foot. But the only thing is that I'm going to duplicate it and uh, two. And I'm going to give it a height of uh, six foot six inches. And okay. And the default cell height I'm going to change to one feet three inches, that is fifteen inches. And I'm going to lay one here. I guess it is eight foot. Let's just place it first, and then WF. Oh yeah, so see, it is eight foot. You can see it in all of that plan. 3D. It's already duplicated. Just rename it and call it eight foot, and change its width to eight foot. Apply and OK. And position it properly. Modify, align. This is the AutoCAD line, and in this case, this is that. Perfect. And you decide where do you want to have an inset whether on this end or this end, it's completely your decision. Yeah, so this is proper, I guess. Okay, and uh, let's quickly add the ventilations for all the toilets. We don't have it provided here as well. So let me go to plinth, plinth level and architecture and window this uh, doors I guess uh, we had provided it no uh, two, four, two, two by two yeah. yes uh, two by two and uh, just give it a cell height of six seat and add one here just go to 3d and okay we also yeah so it's added just copy to clipboard and paste align to selected levels and add it on first floor as well yeah okay and here also we have a toilet block so first floor Just select this and say CS, that is create similar and place it here. Go 
the seal height i guess is needs to be 6 foot and in this case it is proper yeah fine so no issues okay now let's add the floor the ventilator the, this one one two and three these are going to be the curtain walls so we'll do that later but uh, let's first complete this model by adding the floor and the terrace level to this so again i need to structural framing has already been copied to that designated layer yes okay yeah fine so what we need to do is that again just copy this floor and uh, copy to clipboard and align to selected levels and first floor, no, terrace level. Okay. And for this, uh, of course, we'll have a different material and that I will show you that how can you add a different material and just uh, edit type and duplicate this call it terrace level okay and you can just uh, change the finished flooring i'll go into materials Look at this, call it uh, terrace level, terrace tiles, yeah that's fine and a set browser, let me just select any of the existing tiles that would that would be relevant. Mosaic flooring, do we have mosaic and ceramic? Mm, okay, let's not forget it. Just add this particular blue tiles and replace that and appearance duplicate that commission one terrace tiles. Okay. Add simple size to four feet. Done. Apply and okay. And okay. Okay, fine. Yeah, that's that's better. Looks good. Okay. So what we need to do is just uh, edit boundary and go to the terrace level and you cannot see the bottom so I think that I need to change the view range attach yeah. view range and bottom view depth to unlimited you will be able to see everything <laughs> so VG and import categories turn it to half tone apply and open so um, there's a lot of mess. Let's change it to first floor. Apply and okay, yeah. So that's that much better. Okay, and with this terrace floor selected, just add a boundary and select the internal uh, line. In this case, just uh, leave this and the clients PR and run this with this. We need to close the toilet slab yeah. and rest everything would remain the same. Okay, and just finish it off. So don't attach. And let's go to preview. Yeah. Fine. 
so you can also if you wish to you can add that same texture flooring for this particular hi and just uh, split the space modify and split face split this and draw the line from here to uh, it's not okay my highlighted lines are all up hl it is not perfectly here so this l And then just finish it and R enter and paint and apply that hair styles. Yeah, perfect. HR. Yeah, perfect. Okay, so what we just need to do is add a parapet to this along this entire. Peri -peri. And <coughs> Sorry. Go to the terrace floor plan and architecture and wall. And this time I'm going to say that main wall, but the level and give it an unconnected height of three foot. And quickly draw the exterior point yeah so this point so that will wrap the layer of plaster one and two and three likewise just go on adding this will come from here i guess this point this internal point i guess now we can really move it later. Select the internal line and exclude the plaster line. So that will add it perfectly and wrap the layer of plaster onto that. Let's keep it to here. And here, I guess we need to move it. Move it. Yeah. Fine. And TR join this with this. Okay. This also needs to be joined. And 3D. And yeah. So see the parapet wall has been added. Just we need to, like for other floors, also we need to join the surfaces for this floor. And you see that. Yeah. But this wall will actually become the main wall. We don't need this because of the lift cabin. Okay. And let's add parapet wall here. Let's go to main wall and terrestrial and connected three foot and the spec lines. Yeah, so that will add. We we'll just need to enter space. And yeah, that's us added. Modify and join. Join the surfaces. You can have one single homogeneous surface, and likewise on the last face, I guess that's perfect. Yeah, and then. 
and uh, thus I guess also needs to be joined. Perfect. And do we have any surfaces left to join? And no, not any. So, fine. So this also is perfect. Only thing that we will have a glazing onto this particular surface. And now let's just quickly uh, take these three walls. And first of all, columns, I guess I need to take the four columns. So I will just select all of this and filter and check none. And columns and structural and architectural columns. And with that selected, I will say that the base, basement level and the top uh, level to say terrace level. And the top offset to 15 inches of Oh, no, wrong selection. So again, select this and filter, check none, columns and structural columns, apply and OK and basement level and top to say terrace level. Why is it not? We have a column here, right? Yeah, so why is it not? So let's select in plan. and check none and structural columns and architectural columns and with that selected uh, the basement level up to the slab top yeah sorry we've had actually selecting <laughs> oh my god sorry and that will take the columns above and yeah perfect okay so again after uh, taking this floor up what you need to do is that you need to go to any of the floor plan and see take the sections from various different and just make cross check that whether that floor is joined so see this is not joined so uh, let's uh, select this and join geometry and join the floor yeah so This is very important, otherwise no use of doing so much of hard work if you cannot make it join properly. And of course here as well. And this structure needs to be joined with the structural plate structural column with the floor and floor with this external layer likewise structural column with that plate and yeah so you need to do this first floor and just drag this section and make sure that so the first floor is also left <laughs> forget about the terrace floor the first floor is also was also not joined so that is something incorrect and we need to properly 
make it fall in place. Again to first floor and take this here. And I guess, yeah, so see this is also left. Okay, fine. First floor, and again, take this section here, and that I guess we joined. Yeah, so that is joined. First floor, and take it here. Hmm. So, join. Sorry, yeah, this was already joined. This two. Only thing is that join and join. Okay. The finish, uh, the flooring layer. I mean, this is added as per this particular floor. But if it is a terrace, then it, at least we need the waterproofing of, uh, say. 300 mm that is one foot so you just do the needful i have already shown you that you can just duplicate this edit type and uh, yeah it's already duplicated what you need to just go to this and increase the flooring to say 300 mm okay and apply and that will increase and then just adjust it according to the desired offset measure it and give it an offset okay i'm not just going to Okay, and now going to 3D, what left is to take the walls. Before that, uh, we need to yeah, yeah, join the columns as well to the floor. Join and this is joined. This I need to join. And this is not anyways. And next is that we need to take this walls on the terrace level and also this uh, beams. But uh, I guess that these walls are along the entire path, so we'll have to draw new walls. But uh, before that, let me just uh, take this uh, lift shaft all the way to this laptop. So change it to slap top and give it a top offset of 15 inch. And also, this autocad plan I need for reference, so let's take it to terrace level. And now, uh, let's go to terrace level and just uh, draw the walls. So, walls and from slab top and top set to 15 inches, yeah, fine. And just draw a couple of walls from here to here and tab and from here to here and this from here to here okay and the last one from this end press tab to this and this i guess so modify and wall joints so there is a problem with beam uh, column location and autocad plan so that's why this column should be actually the shear walls should be anyways forget it you can adjust it later right now let's okay fine and then let's go to slap top okay and yeah here there are the icon we see that yeah okay sorry I guess that 3D and also we need to take this uh, columns 
one and two and this and this to slap top and the top offset of 15 inch okay and then go to where is that laptop okay and architecture and roof by footprints edit type duplicate six inch edit and you can give it whatever material you want right now i'm just drawing one and from here to here from here to here okay and all of this didn't have the flow check fine so finish uh, oh yeah mm, so let's just do the one one roof okay and we'll go to 3d yeah that's fine mm, okay everything is fine no issues only thing that we need to join this walls with that surface yeah, by normal the surface okay and yeah if you just closely watch this uh, terrace level or first floor plan um, I guess I made a mistake no, terrace level. so yeah so terrace level plan if you see that this particular master bedroom has a sloping roof and this is the roof which doesn't have any access and here this balcony has the semi-open pergolas defined onto that so let's just redo that and for that i guess that i need to modify and um, but uh, this plan is at what level yeah this is the restore plan so i can just snap to okay and li modify and snap to this line okay and we just need to turn off this height category okay and this should actually we will not have this wall and neither this wall this wall will go all the way to this end yeah to go up to this edge and we will have another one wall parapet wall cs select this wall and cs that is create similar and let that wall come to here and both this walls will have uh, total unconnected height of only 15 inch okay because this terrace is not accessible and fine so now let's add a sloping roof to to this and for that i'll go to architecture and roof by footprints and say this basic roof yeah, six inch you can apply whatever material you want but let's apply it material or say that it is a slab a lift shaft yeah fine okay and cast a sloping slab and I'll just give it a little bit of offset overhang in case of four feet one and two and also yes we need to cover this edges this walls TR and TR TR I guess uh, 4 feet will be too much anyway let's uh, first select all the sign and uncheck define slope and uh, let's move it 18 inches and yeah let's proper move 18 inches 
not eight. Eighteen. I hate you. M enter. Eighteen inches. Fine. T R and. That's okay. And let's just finish. And don't attach. And let me go to three D. And oh. That's pretty huge. So let's come to this uh, flow, and again I need to go to UN and degrees. Are okay, fine. And let's see that what degree is it showing. Let's change this to 25. That's better. Or uh, even that is a bit more. So let's change it to 20. Yeah, that's fine. And now what you can do is just uh, select this wall, attach top base, and okay. And likewise, you need to select all this one and one and two and. Okay, yeah, sorry. So, yeah, and this to attach top base. Okay, drag it up to this point. And likewise, you also need to say that attach top base. Okay, and this to also attach top base. Also, this I guess attach top base. And yeah, that's perfect. Okay. So we have been added, you know that I mean previous tutorials I have shown you how to add the let me just show you that if I go to insert and load family you go to libraries and English Imperial and Windows and just select this yes and just load it and while going to architecture and window you can add a skylight to this particular roof Where is it? No, in place. And yes, and if I select it, oh, where is it? Place it. Yeah, fine. It has, we can just rotate it. You can change its dimension, uh, whatever you want. Like I say. say the width to say five feet and apply and OK and that will get bigger. But it also you need to change the height in that respect. Something like yeah, that's fine. And if not this, uh, then you can also add a dormer window. Of course, I know that. Of course, uh, you guys might be knowing that what is a dormer window. So let me just quickly show you that how to add a dormer window to this. So walls and main wall and terrace level unconnected three foot height. That's fine. And let me just draw a simple uh, wall. A couple of walls. One, two, and three. Okay. And let's go to three D. And before going to three D. Let's move it and define a sloping roof onto this roof by footprints and I just want a simple roof and this too I will get get rid of slope and just finish it I don't attach for now and first let's go to 3d and see that what have we created and oh my god so we need to take all of this to a certain height 
let's give them a height offset of let's say five feet five feet would be too much uh, three feet is okay and let's this to have an off base offset of three foot and hr uh, yeah so this can actually go to base offset of four feet okay that's enough and let's select all of this one just hold on to this and press tab so you will select the chain of walls and then just attach top base and attach it with this wow perfect and then just join this roof with the uh, oh. redo redo okay, fine join and join roof and this to this okay that's perfect only thing that um, this walls maybe just give it a height offset of two feet six inches yeah perfect and now you can actually go to window and add a fixed window onto this one and two but what you are seeing right now is the roof so sill height to let's change it to four feet and also drag it a bit m a and four feet okay but after adding this dome window you need to cut that much portion of the roof so how will we do that so just press h h and HH this as well and also let me just hide proper, proper visibility and yeah so let's just go to Dorma and select this and let's say they ask me to pick wall roof edges so I will pick this and pick this and pick this and TR and join that TR and join that and you see now I'm working in 3D and we need to join these two so pick one and two and join all of that and be very careful or else you would end up creating a wrong cut and just finish and you see it's not creating the proper cut Showing me some error. So let's try again. Delete, pick wall edges, pick this, pick this, and pick this, and this. Okay, TR, and TR, TR, and uh, and fingers crossed this time it should work and perfect absolutely perfect and then after that just modify and uh, architecture modify join and join this to this this to this and this to this after joining just go to join geometry switch order select that and this wall select this this wall uh -oh. switch order and finally join switch order and this and this okay and you have your perfect doma window created and this side is having a skylight hr and yes everything is perfect and let's quickly add the curtain panels 
curtain panel openings to this uh, facades okay before that let me just join this geometries and make it look one homogeneous surface join and join this to this okay and likewise join this to this and also join this to this okay so we have to add curtain panels or curtain walls not panels curtain walls to this uh, one two and three three of them okay so first let's start with this face so let me just close all of this the unnecessary views which are open and I would just like to have this plinth level onto which we are going to and let's again take this particular AutoCAD plan to plinth level and also we need to align it again so we have this reference line already there so just align and align this point with uh, this and yeah so the blue f wireframe and yeah so this is the tab and tab yeah eight feet of opening we have and what is this concrete rectangular beam provider showing in this um, maybe because of the view range yeah, so let's change it to associated level to yeah, fine. So now we have a clear floor plan, CC. Okay, perfect. So WF and eight feet of curtain wall. So I'm just going to add walls and let's first try to understand and lay the uh, storefront system that comes with Rabbit. So I will add this storefront and edit it and duplicate it, calling it living room curtain wall curtain wall okay and the maximum spacing but we have just the play of this has the finished floor level of 101 that is almost four inches and the beam depth is 18 inches so we have only the play of uh, let's say eight foot so if eight foot is the play then the vertical grid should be uh, let me say two feet six inches and the horizontal grid also to be two feet six inches fine and vertical mullions and horizontal mullions uh, large huge sizes which is, uh, let me just first place and show you so if i just place this and i guess that tab and plinth level to not unconnected sorry uh, plinth level to 101 mm and to unconnected height of 8 feet for the lintel and yeah so that will cut through okay and let's go to 3d and yes we have our curtain wall placed okay the only thing is that the size of mullions is too huge and also this because of that it's showing this one so what i will do is just go to edit type and change the vertical mullions to something smaller size copy and paste and horizontal mullions to also some smaller size you can also edit this and lay your own, create your own custom sizes that are also too huge. So what we'll do is that for border one and border two, for both horizontal and more vertical, we will make it this, but for interior mullions, we will just select it one inch square. Copy and paste, apply and okay. Yeah, that's better. And now we need to create an opening to pop out so what i will do is just uh, uh, 
just select this and for this the horizontal grid should be continuous so vertical grid is continuous right now make it horizontal grid continuous yeah fine and at this end again uh, we need to join join manually because uh, it won't do that for one particular single module join and join select this join yeah okay fine and cc i enter yeah okay fine and so this two yes we need to join join and join okay cc r enter okay and we are going to create a give a door onto this so we'll actually we need to delete this module delete uh, but it won't allow because it's pinned so unpin also unpin this unpin this and delete all of this one two three and that would be two less so also we need to unpin this uh, unpin unpin and yes and select one two and three or oh. shift and deselect and again select uh, and yeah add remove segments and get rid of this grid add remove segment get rid of this grid this grid and likewise add remove segment and get rid of this grid also and now for this we can what we can do is that unpin this and that will make this active and now you can i've already uh, loaded added this door curtain wall double front if you don't find it then go to insert and load family and from english imperial or whatever system you are working just go to go to what yeah, those and here is that so you can load that into your project okay but i already have it loaded just to save time and i'm just going to post it and wow okay what we just need to do is now uh, again this horizontal yeah, horizontal is continuous so why is it let me just select this one and two and this okay cc r enter and if you want you can just play around with the grid and it just according to yours what i'm going to do is that just uh, for one in square and rectangle i'm going to apply some material so that but where to apply uh, where to get the material from so yes on the family section come to curtain wall mullions and we have that rectangular mullion the one in square type properties so here you can apply a material and right now it's aluminium but i will change that to something uh, wood so, uh, let's define one darker shade uh, duplicate and one mullion okay and go to appearance library and appearance and wood and you have a lot of woods here a lot of materials of which you can select any i'm going to just select this walnut and appearance and duplicate it call it one oops one million okay and then apply okay and you don't forget to duplicate just to save time i'm not duplicating this otherwise uh, you'll end up making with the system making changes with the system finally and just copy this 
apply and OK. So that has changed all the one in square. What we need to do is that just apply that material to here. Apply and OK. And yeah, fine. Also, likewise, you can apply that same material to here, this door that's gotten all door. Yeah, that's one homogeneous surface. And I guess, I guess that the vertical grid is too big. So let's change the vertical grid to one foot six inches. And that will again create a problem. No, not that. Sorry, this was two feet six inches. Fine. This was supposed to be one feet six inches. Apply and to adjust. No, it didn't adjust, and we have to manually. So, I show you that. Show you, show that in another project wall right now. That this be okay. So now we need to add the curtain wall to this particular portion. This has been added and here also we need to add a fixed curtain wall. So now let's go to length, no, first floor. And yeah, I will just roughly add a curtain wall to this wall and the wing bone curtain wall. I would really edit it and duplicate it and call it master bedroom curtain wall that we see the blue for short and with all that same settings same i will just have a little bit of smaller divisions okay and okay and just draw from here to here but uh, uh, this was supposed to be one feet six one feet three inches that is 15 inches and this should be unconnected eight foot it's not cutting the wall why edit type and automatically and it is checked on unconnected to eight feet and this to 15 inches okay fine and let's go to see 3d and see and yeah of course a bedroom will never have such curtain walls but this is just to show you the function that how can you can play around with this okay and now this was we were just playing with the existing uh, what do we say uh, the family that comes with rabbit that is this wall and in both the cases we edited the storefront and duplicated it and edited it what if you want to have a customized division so i will show you that in this particular area okay and this particular i forgot to so this hi and yeah okay so what we need to do is that select this and split face split this face pick this line one two and three and just finish and go to paint and apply it the same material wooden deck and so you don't need to manipulate the floor and just within that floor you can have such customization you can apply different material to the same surface hr okay and then just go to lines and invisible lines and turn this to invisible lines oh, we have a little bit of problem the boundary length floor so what is the problem don't attach this anyway that's a negligible glitch so that can only be worked out not an issue so let's make let me go to and we will have it till here so 
which floor is that uh, this is first floor and this is terrace floor okay fine so let's go to plinth level and this time i'm just going to add architecture wall and just a, a curtain wall a simple curtain wall not even the exterior glazing just a simple piece of glass curtain wall and i'm going to edit it and duplicate it and call it uh, deck area curtain wall and i'm not going to lay any grids to it i'm just going to click ok and plinth level with the offset of 101 mm and unconnected height to 8 feet for now is fine or let's take it to terrace level okay and just going to draw one simple about essentially for that we need to have a wall then only we can um, just try oh yeah it added no issues fine perfect so first is that this particular glass panels have been added to all this curtain walls so what if I want them to be black so I will just select this and to the curtain panel glazed I go to edit type and that have been given the material of glass I will just go and duplicate this and I'll call it black glass and what I will do is go to and um, um, not black glass but sorry um, and I guess that already has defined that black oh yeah see black cast gray so we don't need to duplicate we can just select this and glass cast glass cast gray and apply or what you can do is that if this is not appropriate let's just see that yeah yeah it's perfect no issues and just now hi and we have this piece of glass we can turn it into right now it is just a piece of glass but now i'll start adding grids to it and that i will manually i need this see this is how you can have your customized divisions onto this and likewise i'll add this vertical and also you can just uh, select this and add remove segments and play around with the design whatever you want and this this is i guess needs to be manipulated add remove and upper. Add remove segments, remove this, remove this as well. Okay, this has gone, but that is not going. Okay, fine. And also, we can add remove segment and remove this. And what we can do is that grid, grid kind. Yeah, curtain grid and one segment and just we can add manually if you wish to just to make it appear like louvers you don't want the entire so the add remove segments one two last one okay and just delete over oh, that would delete the entire okay yeah fine and then just select this and change it to that double button panel wow and what you can do is that mullions 
and select the smaller margins for the periphery or bigger margins for the periphery and for the internal margins this time we are going to select circular margins and actually what we can do is all grids and just place and wow and press tab and circular mullion and also give it a material of mullion apply and okay so this is how you can customize the curtain wall hr beautiful what left is to add the covering to this and for that the top constraint is terrace floor so let's uh, go to terrace floor and now we cannot see anything but i need to go to view range and change this to say bottom uh, to say first floor line and yeah and now i'm going to say that i want roof and this time i'm going to say that oh, sorry not roof floor no oh, where was that roof and yeah roof under roof you have this sloped glazing and that sloped glazing uh, i wanted that uh, for terrace level and i want it from here to here and i'm going to say that define slope and check for all and actually you need to see that where is that curtain ball edge of that don't attach and let's go to 3d and where is that slope degreasing added uh oh i had it wrong location this should that uh, select this and delete or uh, select it and edit footprints and then go to terrace level and delete this and that was what i was wondering that i can't see the anyways uh, so just rectangle and it's always a learning process and define slope and check and just finish it what is this oh let's forget it for me 3d and likewise you can hi both of this and just add grids in continuation to this let's hide the mullions and sa and hh hh also the sa the vertical mullions sa and hh until you can see that where have the grid actually placed but no we need that for reference edit type and join condition horizontal grid continuous line and okay. okay and you can manually select each of this and play with the join conditions but i am not going to do that but in red and I just want to finish this off to um, three and then you can just add the horizontal divisions but in red and this one two and four as you wish and for all of this 
I'm going to don't forget to duplicate so that I can not just duplicating and grid one and grid two and the interiors to be the bigger ones and the uh, sorry the interiors to be the circular and border one and border to be the the same so copy and paste 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 and this copy and paste you will have the conflict at junctions but that's okay that can always be worked out that's not an issue okay and hr and yeah wow okay so the only thing left is to add uh, the pergolas to this so for that again i need to go to terrace level and just like we added a slope glazing here i'm going to add a slope glazing onto this and duplicate and oh sorry architecture and roof roof and slope glazing and boundary line for that i'm going to select this point to this point and let's first check whether it appears to be perfect don't attach 3d yeah but uh, this is not what i want and let's just um, select and delete it and what we'll do is that we will actually add a roof which will have one chairs but we'll do that by a different method this time and this face is not joined or what join and join this place yeah now it is joined okay so what we are going to do is that we are going to go to terrace level and hl fine and go to architecture and component and modeling place we are going to extrude something by extrusion command the category you are going to select roof only and i'm going to call it pergolas okay and i'll just make a simple extrusion and extrusion is at terrace level so just a random uh, which doesn't have any 12 inches co and copy it multiple times and likewise two of them will accommodate in this position this portion okay and the extrusion end uh, extrusion starts to be uh, zero and extrusion end should be minus 18 inches that will flush with the beam bottom and yes and give it a material of what let's get a material of this lift shaft and concrete material and finish and yeah let's see okay that's perfect so now what you can do is that add glazing between this okay and that also we can do easily by extrusion only no need to worry about it with extrusion and create one simple rectangle And right now I'm not deducting every portion, but it's just one homogeneous glass. Okay, so extrusion start zero and extrusion end one inch, a 19 mm glass, and give it a material of glass. Let's say black glass. Uh oh, dark glass. Yeah, fine. Okay, and let's finish it. CD. And yeah. But instead, that was more appropriate. Let's just delete it. <laughs> this was, this sounds more appropriate. Let's finish the model. 
and now just see the where are this other tabs post flow and yeah so I just see the play of shadow if I just turn on the shadow yeah so this is the play of light so you see okay so let's move further and what left with this is to add the stair cabin and this windows which are not having any weather shades also to this window so let's edit this wall and have an opening into it this uh, edit profile and just draw a simple rectangle randomly and now we will work in 3d so this this particular height uh, needs to be 18 inches and we should have a cut of six feet oh, sorry. this is 18 inches it's fine so this should be six foot six inches and the rest left would be two feet nine inches that's too much and yeah sorry you'll have a beam over here you forgot to cast it but that's okay you can do it and we have this just one eight of an inch okay and we will just copy this co and finish okay and then likewise we need to select the wall all of them are joined so to create a problem selecting how to select mm -hmm. H H H H yeah and then finally edit profile and again H L and let me just paste that somewhere over here and let's have that opening move it move it from this point to this point exactly it will have the same cut highlighted lines over that it's closed loop sorry we were just select this rectangle move it move it from this point to this point mm -hmm. but this wall is not showing so might be because of let's just move that bit up and just make sure that uh, this is one feet six inches and what is this uh, how much is this one feet six inches as well yeah, fine. let's finish it okay Oh yeah, because of the orientation, we were not able to properly visualize that. But now it is proper. Let's press HR, and yeah, so see, it's perfect. And just HS that as well, and select this wall, and edit profile, and again, Control V, paste it. This is a smarter way of drafting, working in 3D. So every time you know you don't have to and this is uh, 18 inches i guess oh this is this cut is not actually change it to 18 inches and this to 18 inches and this is five foot five and a half that's fine, doesn't matter. Finish it and just press HR. Okay, so now we have this uh, different cuts along the staircase. I don't know that why is that particular 
okay yeah just because of that uh, yeah sorry because this particular wall has a top offset of 1380 so profile and i guess that one this should be at least two feet not even two feet 15 inches and 18 inches so 15 plus 18 is 15 plus 18 how much 23 no, sorry, 33 inches. Yeah, 2 feet 9 inches, 33 inches. That's right. So that will make this cut equal. Okay. And then what we need to do is our enter and go to any of the floor plans. Let's go to print level and architecture and wall. And again, I'm just going to add a simple, and this is a duplicate stair cabin glass. I'm not going to define any of the properties right now. Just that the plinth level offset should be, since we're placing it at plinth level, it 18 inches. And let's go up to the terrace level with the minus 18 and let's just add one piece of glass okay but in this case what you need to do is the, go to the system panel base edit and change this offset to zero apply and okay and the glass will be added on the external surface and just move it move it to this point Okay, let's go to 3D and uh, like this, that terrace level, no, so slap down, that's perfect, okay, and sorry, the cut, which uh, is not matching, only in this or in this case of this wall so that we can go to first floor and just edit profile and let's just open it 3d and snap it to this okay and finish yeah okay so that is how we have added the glass wall to that stair cabin. But yeah, okay, HR and just select it HI and then not stair grid. Let's have some systematic division this time. Two feet, three feet, seven feet, eight. Okay, and mullions, all grids. What type of mullions do you want? Let's have this 2.5. Okay. And let's have the vertical grid continuous. Oh, sorry, horizontal grid continuous. There is another option. Just select all of this and make continuous. Yeah. Select all of this and make continuous. 
and I think we need to define the material for this not aluminium but the mullion okay apply and okay HR Next is that we need to provide some weather shades or elevation treatment to these two walls. And let's make it very simple. Let's go to plinth level. And here we already have a grid. So let's set plane, pick a plane and pick this and go to uh, northeast northeast south and west west elevation okay and h h and then let's get we go to component model in place and generic model or oh, it is going to be part of walls so let's go select walls okay elevation treatment okay and extrusion again going to select this and pick lines one two three four one two three and four here and join this and this is already joined and the extrusion starts zero extrusion in two feet And give it a material of some cladding, brick cladding. So, duplicate brick cladding and go to appearance library and there is brick wall paint wall covering mm. no not this flooring where is brick missionary yeah sorry missionary and brick sorry and let's select any of the existing let's select this do we have any better now this could be something different and appearance duplicate brick cladding Okay, and just change its styling to uh, eight feet. Done. Apply. Okay. Just finish. TR and join it. TR. Oh, wrong extrusion. HB. Just finish. Watch it in three D. Yeah. this wall why is this wall for uh oh edit profile ah yeah sorry we forgot to do that and the same way you can have the uh, provide with the shades or the elevation treatment whatever you want any of the face of any of the walls okay and let's start adding the missing details and let's complete this model so you see that uh, just like this uh, strips which you have created here you can also have the same sort of customization for this wall 
and then I'm going to work in 3D. I'm just randomly going to add a few of the strips. Just make sure that uh, that is not yeah so just change this to two feet nine inches and this to say 18 inches okay and this is 150 yeah, fine. so just copy a couple of points and copy Three. and let's have some punctures in the wall okay and let's add some piece of glass to that so let's go to lens level first and this is that opening and wall and just let me add a simple curtain wall to this and lens level one foot six inches and to the first floor a minus stop let's just, let's just draw a simple piece of glass you highlight it all the way it doesn't matter and 3d and that has added the piece of glass to those slits and just snap snap to bottom oh it went down Okay, and the top, I guess uh, we cannot see the top, but let's uh, get an offset of something like 3 feet, minus 3 feet. So yeah, now we can see this drag handles and you can just hover until you can snap to the, uh, yeah, with that you can position it properly, okay and just copy it copy to clipboard and paste align to selected level and add it to terrace level okay and we'll just adjust it uh, snap and likewise snap i'm just showing you the command that how to place it then you can make it perfect as per your need so while going to terrace level you can yeah see it has been perfectly created so okay so one last thing left is that you need to add the staircase to this stair cabin the stair block okay the typical staircase that will start from the basement level and up to the terrace floor but before that uh, we have added a lot of elements on this uh, terrace floor and everywhere so again just a cross check off that whether everything is joined perfectly or not before we add the staircase and railing to this okay so for that i need to go to plinth level plan and let's uh, start from this end and look at the section so this seems to be proper here there will be a beam and here too no here there is a beam at this level so it doesn't matter so this is perfect yeah so see something is always join and join this yeah. to have a perfect yeah, so this is proper and same way join with this okay uh, let's go to first floor again and take this section a bit at this place uh, in pinch level that will be much better so yeah, here so see something okay rest everything is fine if I miss some points, then you just cover it. And this. Yeah. No issues. And finally, this portion.
so this is the door okay and that needs to be given uh, offset of 100 and 200 for finished floor level and likewise for all the doors you can just do it so this is this wall internal wall needs to be joined This is the terrace level slab, slab top, sorry, slab top, this is the slab top, see, and the slab top, okay, and we go to bend level and last for the, oh, see, a lot of things are happening in this. everything is fine so now let's switch to the horizontal ones and we will start from here and everything seems perfect in this then we will come to this end okay only this portion is getting cut well, this section and okay, join and wow. level and take this to this end and this yeah, so this is going to be join and then switch order like this and select this join this oh, this is the door which you need to elevate it okay mm. elevate it to finish floor level by this limit offset of 101 mm and the rest of everything is fine print level and here perfect no issues so finally coming to this portion central portion where we are going to leave the staircase and oh a lot of things are remaining in this to so join join this with this So here is the portion where you are going to lay the staircase and here we will have a railing overlooking okay so let's uh, start adding the staircase and for that i need to measure the unfinished levels the distance between the unfinished floor levels and this to this is 11.4 this is 10 and this is also 10 so the typical floor height is 10 foot the only thing that 11 foot 4 inch in this case because we are adding the plinth level of 18 inches so here we will have more uh, the riser height a little bit more but that's okay so let's go to plinth level 3d and take the autocad plan 
लेंथ लेवल नहीं आप बेसमेंट लेवल है एक्चुअली बेसमेंट लेवल इट इज देयर ऑन द बेसमेंट लेवल सो लेट्स गो टू बेसमेंट लेवल एंड फाइंड सो दिस इज द स्टेयर केस व्हिच आर हैविंग द 20 राइजर्स एंड दिस इज हैविंग अ कस्टम शेप सो वी नीड टू हैव क्रिएटेड बाय स्केच वी कैन नॉट क्रिएटेड बाय रेगुलर रन सो आर्किटेक्चर एंड स्टेयर and i would say that you know, just for convenience yeah, i would like to turn this to millimeters okay right and i would say that i want to go from basement level and up to plinth level okay and what is the the right number of uh, risers are 20 yeah that's fine but uh, we need to see that what is the finished floor on the basement is 151 and here is 101 okay so here it is 6 inches here it is 4 inches so what we need to do is that basement level with the base offset of 151 and up to the plinth level with offset of 101 so that will automatically change adjust its riser height The actual riser height has changed to 172.8. Okay, so now let's go to basement and say that sketch create sketch and first let's sketch the boundary. One, two, and four, five, five and six. Okay, and then the risers. Again, big lines. One, two, three, four. Twenty. D R and just have a close shape. D R and also just have cross check at this junction. Fine. And it's going from basement to first. Just finish. Okay. Stair path. We need to add the stair path. And just finish. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so let's just select this. And go to 3D. With that selected, press H. So you cannot isolate it. But what we can do is that it's finished, and the rail structure is not continuous. Yeah, that's fine because this custom shape staircase. Now to how to visualize this particular staircase. So let's go to section box. Let's go top, and this is the section box. Let me just take it to here. Get rid of the railings on that side. No need it. Okay, and this is your staircase. Okay, but if you just press H I, and since that particular shape is a custom shape, so it won't create the stringer beams. Okay, not even in case of if you just change and. You say that none and none, and say the middle support apply and okay. Then to it won't create. To want that stringer beams, you need to have a proper run 
and then only it will create it. you you cannot have the stringer beam with some such custom shapes okay so in this case what you need to do is that edit type and get rid of the supports and make the supports as per your need while going to component and model in place and creating a generic model and let's select the stairs this time and instead you have to draft by extrusion you have to create that supports whether middle or lateral whatever you want according to that your need. and if not that just select this and change this to monolithic steps okay both options are open for you so if you want this to be cantilever steps which would have its support in the wall then that is also fine so in that case just let it be like this the only thing is that you just need to change this uh, material and just change the tread and the riser material to ramp material you can give whatever material but and just apply and okay apply and okay yeah that's fine okay hr and also in this railing just change this top rail element and give this a material of that uh, mullion just copy apply okay and then for the rail structure apply the same material you can apply the different material if you want but it's just this, i'm showing you the application that where to apply the material from and then while going to balusters uh, steel flat upright and the square you put up any not change the material from here so just apply and okay and go to railing and under railings you have this baluster square for which you have three fourth and just apply that material okay and that will change all the and then steel upright where is that uh, steel upright uh, yeah this is it so again go to type properties and give that the material of that don't forget to duplicate it i'm just right now showing you the application that how to okay and even though for this case you see that the rail structure the top rail structure is not continuous because of the custom sketch okay now what you need to do is that again go to section one not section one section two and this has been positioned properly the only thing that you need to go to edit type and not edit type but select this and end with the riser just uncheck that okay okay fine and then just uh, now you have to again check that here it is 101 and here also it is 101 i guess So just select the stairs and railing and just copy to clipboard and align paste to align to selected levels and to first floor and terrace floor. Okay, no sorry, plinth floor and first floor. And just okay. But for this you need to change the top offset to 201. And the base offset 201 as well so that will adjust it in place and likewise this to 101 and 101 okay and let's go to 3d and you have your staircase going from that basement level up till the terrace level and everything is correct so okay you can just see it in section also 
this section also and this section also fine so next step is that uh, you need to go to first floor and add architecture and railing and sketch path or actually just railing first and this glass panel bottom fill and to plinth level with the base offset of 101 just sketch from here till here okay and just finish and with that selected copy to clipboard and paste to selected levels align to selected levels that is first floor and terrace level okay so that might have added the railing there as well so let me go to first floor and also add a railing to here architecture and railing and this quick line and finish from your first floor that's fine okay and let's just go to 3d and see and yeah so see that this railing has been added to all the floors okay and this final will edit path and go to terrace level and will join till here in 3d okay and on the other floors it's like this okay if you just want to see your staircase then just select both of this and say that i select category so this is how your staircase has been placed going from okay so because of the customization customized shape it's not having a continuous rail element for the railings but that's okay that's that can always be adjusted okay so hr and get rid of the section box okay and if you just watch here and this portion also has the railing okay you can see the slab over here but you don't need to do anything just um, apply that wall and by now I know you know that how to that beam wall and just brush it by giving it a proper constraint okay so that is our architectural model has been completed the only thing left is to add the site components to this so let's just let me get rid of all this and let me open the road level plan yeah and while going to components uh, you can add all the components that is the car and the street lights and the trees the parking space car is not being so i will just show you that where to load that from road family and under english imperials uh, entrage and this car vehicle and this uh, male female and whatever you want semi truck van whatever you want you can add you start some existing library of rabbit okay not only this this will take a bit of time okay not only this uh, you can go to plinth level and add some of the existing furniture library also that too if I go to just insert and load family then under English Imperial you have this furniture and you have beds uh, I will add this bed then load family again and add a sitting Okay, I'll add this and load family again and furniture. And, uh, under setting only, we should have the dining tables. And we don't have, okay, just press back to storage. 
uh, no how is how can storage have so tables now this is all existing library I can't I find the where should be that kitchen set it should be here but anyways uh, right now I can't find it it's just uh, that's not great time and components and add this couple of this tab space and you can flip between the directions one and two also add here and you can add bed also the bed here just select your preferred size and then Okay, and likewise, you can add all the details to this. Let me just show you. And there is a dining table, like a dining table with chairs, but not able to find it. Let's try once again import load family and English Imperial and under furniture system. No sending decks. You can see a lot of uh, existing material library of rabbit a lot of things mm, where was the dining table furniture and tables and yeah so here is it is table dining with chairs round chairs okay and just open And then you are going to component. You can load that. You want the pins level? Yeah, that's fine. Uh, you want uh, different size? And yeah, so see. Big. Okay, this is fine. So you can also add, create your custom kitchen platform and add all the sanitary equipment to that. And that you would find under here, load family and go to furniture not furniture sorry the specialty equipments and that too has lots of different existing library gym equipments and all this see and on the domestic you will find this cooktop and freeze and existing kitchen platform and everything which you can add oven and range okay so you just need to do r d off and okay also, you can, let me just show you. Also, you can create your custom furniture by using all this uh, component and modern place and generic model with uh, all this, uh, using all this uh, 3D drafting commands. I have created all this uh, custom furniture. Okay. Also, if not this, then you can just open file and new and create a family. So you can use that from project to project. And while going to your units, preferred units, you can open this generic model and design whatever you want. Okay. So I have created some few of which some other existing components of Ravit. Yes, I just showed you how to load this oven and frizz and the rain cooktop and everything these are all these are all the existing materials of uh, material library of rabbit and this is entirely created by extrusion custom living okay tv unit and storage and likewise dining tables chairs and everything okay so you can just create this and then load that into the project and let it be the part of the project. So next is that we need to add. Now let's go to load level and add architecture components and add that car. Where is that car? 
track is not relevant car be to yeah spray tag and one here one here and also you can have a parking onto here in parking space and let's add some human figures components Like to place it on plinth level and offset from host 101 mm level finish floor level. No, but I don't know that what is the finish floor level for this. This, 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 this. Keep it zero for now. And add. Let's have. Also, you can add human figures on the upper floor. Let's go to first floor and let's add human figures in balcony components and one more to here and okay, fine and finally components and trees. Let's add some trees. Not on first floor, but on road level. I'm just randomly adding. Okay, and even if you wish to add street lights to this but this is the MEP material so it doesn't matter we can use it and DM and then we'll select both of that and create model group so where you can create that model group from model group create group group 1 and select uh, add this and this, this so that the group is created now what you can do is just copy and place few of them press place and rotate okay and then again just copy Okay, and let's go to 3D. Oh. Uh, all of these trees have been added to wrong level. 1, 2, 3, and 4. Let's change that to road level. Okay. We don't have any surface, so that's why we cannot see this more. Okay. Fine, so there is our architectural model complete. This too has been referenced to wrong level. Same way, all of this.
okay but actually it seems like right now if you see that the structure is hanging in air so let's add some surface some ground to this particular 2d architecture model and make it a bit realistic for that i'm just going to edit this extrusion and edit in place and uh, oh my god um, how much is this again we need to switch between units and make this equal to millimeters okay okay uh, how much is this extrusion uh, that is 100 mm yeah fine so let's go to model top and create a simple extrusion and set plane and very important you need to set this plane to road level okay and then just click the make a bigger rectangle something like and just give it a material of earth we have material existing for earth only thing is that we need to change the styling uh, but again for that i need to go to imperial because i don't understand and yeah we can just enter 15 feet that will accept you yeah, 15 feet this is the best part of average so apply and okay and uh, with the uh, extrusion start this and extrusion into let's say 95 mm and just finish it yeah but uh, also we need to deduct the side portion from this oils because we have the basement and everything so just exclude that much portion and then finish okay and finish and yeah perfect and the tiling is too but that's okay you can always change the tiling and make it appear appropriate one thing also i wanted to show you that uh, you can switch between your preferred windows and i just wanted to show you with window type so with this is sliding uh, folding eight feet then i will just change this to uh, sliding folding six feet okay and this window i'm going to change to this box window uh, it is not relevant but just wanted to show you the function and edit type and we don't need to duplicate because we don't have any other and width should be seven feet and height if 15 inches is the sill height and if you want to reach the lintel of eight feet then this should be six foot nine inches so six foot nine inches and apply and okay and yeah that's uh, looks better okay so I just this is and just to sample size to 10 feet by 10 feet yeah I apply and okay yeah, that will make it look much better so we are completely done with the architectural model fine and modeling of all 3d elements and entire structure is complete so that was basically pertaining to the 3d interface of Ravit that is modeling of the third dimension that is modeling 3d elements and creating this architectural model with all its minute details and precision that is the column floor beam and wall joints it layers the plaster layer and everything how efficiently we designed this entire architectural model okay but as i said earlier in my introduction rabbit is not only about modeling the 3d interface but it uh, does involves uh, but it does very prominently and efficiently also models the 2d interface of rabbit which again has a bifurcation that is one is the documentation part which involves the documentation of the different drawings all the drawings and for that i will just take you to this uh, site plan this is the entire site layout with all its attributes 
attributes and which the plan which you see from top okay and the the road the road network and the street lights and the cars and trees and everything okay then next comes is this presentation set that, that floor plan that is also divided into two parts that is the floor plan presentation and the working set so i will just take you to first this plinth level so this is the presentation drawing of the plinth level floor plan which has all its materials and everything properly <coughs> positioned and uh, properly demonstrated and if you just uh, minutely absorb this then this is the room tag which is right now showing that this is living room uh, number two and it's calculating its total uh, area in square feet okay not only this if i just uh, let me just show you this that it has various design options that is for furniture layout this is right now what you are seeing that is the designer option if i just turn, turn it to this option then you can have a different configuration within this furniture set within your same floor plan which you can an option which you can show to clients okay but i just consider that this option got approved and this is the final option this not only pertains to the 2d interface but also if i just take you to this 3d then right now this is the designer's option and let me just take you to this another option okay so this is the flat roof option with this windows okay so you can have various design options within both the 2d and the 3d interface while working with rabbit okay not only this if i let me just change this to main model and let me just show you this so the the roof that you just saw this is exploded view of it which i have made and you can document this and position this in the sheet composition okay the exploded view fine also you can have various other details like let's say that if you have, want to have the door legends then this is also possible in rabbit you can create the door and window legends and whatever legends you want but the only flaw with this is that this will give a section view of it. So you see that the section option is grayed out for this particular thing. But doesn't matter. We also have this uh, in the view tab. If you just click this drafting view, then you can also create uh, a drafting view for Rabbit. And scale. Let me just select any of this. And on that particular drafting view, you can basically all the 3d options will be grayed out but only what thing that you can draft whatever you want with this detail lines and of course you cannot draft details like autocad and since many of the designers all of us are working on autocad since years so it would be difficult to draft details like autocad but that is possible with rabbit it's not that it's time consuming so what in that case you need to do is that just go to manage and under manage links if you go to cad uh, then right now it's not loaded so infer and i will just link cad and what you can do is that wherever your autocad plan is uh, you can just browse to that location and also you can have the autocad plan in that in this particular interface and yeah open and you see that our autocad plan has been uh, autocad drawing has been loaded in this rabbit environment okay and if you just go to manage and manage links then under cad formats now you see that details in cad and link live mini project both the drawings are part of this particular interface and while going to vg under import categories also you can just expand this and you can just synchronize your layer before importing that particular autocad file and after bringing uh, bringing that preferred layers you can just uh, have, give your particular lines with that particular line style and its color and line width and whatever customization you want you can do with this okay and you can make this to be part of your sheet Okay, so this was regarding the 
2D modeling of 2D interface as far as far as only this documentation part is concerned. But what next is that within floor plans also we can have bifurcations as I said that you essentially need to create just like presentation floor plan you also need the working floor plan of that level in order to have executions on sites okay so this particular plan and this is the working drawing of that particular uh, particular plinth level uh, where all the details has been added for example this is these are the dimensions the grid lines that is the face line or center line the section markers the room tags and you see that it's very efficiently gives dimension and you can have several layers of dimension that if you want this particular one wall this just for demonstration purpose i have haven't detailed out the entire floor plan but just one wall wherein you can see that this particular one wall has been dimensioned <clears throat> in this way you can also have several layers of this particular one wall that is certain uh, some designers and architects are often interested in giving dimensions with this various the, this is the baseline that is from this particular base point it is calculating all the dimensions okay and this is the another way that is the ordinate style this is the baseline style and this is the ordinate style wherein this is again calculating the distances from one particular point and then laying dimensions likewise okay so that was regarding the dimensions now what important is that um, if you just uh, if I press WT and you closely observe this then in this particular floor plan presentation this is the room tag which is showing the room number and its total area okay, the carpet area but this particular uh, floor plan that is the working floor plan shows its complete dimension so that is that if I just uh, go to modify and measure it the unfinished line then that will exactly read that particular dimension that is 24.6 cross 18 inch 18 feet okay so why is that because the rabbit doesn't provide this particular family of this room tag the rabbit provides the family of room tag that is this room tag with area and with volume it's just the room tag and with area and volume so this if i just uh, edit this family if i take you to this family then this is the custom room tag which I have designed and I will just show you that if I just go to edit label then with this length parameter this is the calculated parameter which I have added if I just go to edit then this is the formula that is added for this particular length and that's why uh, it is reading that perfectly length by width in that manner okay I will definitely give you the text file of this you can just uh, see it in the description and that is it so next is that what I want to show you uh, what was that uh, yeah that after creating this uh, details you can very efficiently have a sheet composition you can very efficiently create the sheet with different drawings and different scales you can see that these are the different drawings of different disciplines and different scales which are composed on to this particular sheet okay and yeah also i will just take you to this plinth level and uh, this floor plan working floor plan and if i just uh, open up this bulb let me see that i'm hiding view by category then you see that this are the two revisions the two revisions that i have been added onto this particular sheet and this has been added in the uh, under here which is that one is the uh, one is the numeric and one is the alpha numeric to check window size and demolish this wall and this has been added as per date wise likewise you can have lots and lots of revisions how much how many revisions whatever you have but basically the thing is to show is that you can have a check of a record of that this was the this sheet was issued on this particular date with so many number of revisions okay so this was the modeling of uh, the 2d interface with respect to documentation okay but what else is that it very efficiently the another part is that for construction purpose we need to 
provide or feed information to this particular structure or model and it very efficiently does that also that is the dimension the detail lines the nomenclature the tagging part most important and the symbols and everything okay so you can have your room tags material tags i will just show but very important of this is that the scheduling part okay we as a designers uh, today in recent times what we do is that we sit with the calculator and spend hours and hours making the schedules and quantifying it and costing and everything so revit also does that part very efficiently so if you just go to i just show you that uh, if i just uh, yeah so you have this area schedule this room schedule floor schedule wall take off material and everything you can have schedule of everything so this are the different schedules okay so first is this area schedule so what is that so that is that you just have this gross building plan so there are two types of basically <coughs> uh, spaces that are created in Revit that one is the room tag that we just saw that is the room schedule uh, this particular rooms I show you this this room tags okay and another is this this particular thing that is the gross area so difference is that the room tag calculates the carpet area that is the, uh, the the floor area that is bounded by rooms that is bounded by walls okay the walls and the columns and the 3d elements but this particular gross building plan divides the area on the basis of the divisions that you give that is just needed this is more of useful in for commercial architects that calculating the space and also few architects are often interested in the analysis of that what function of space requires how much area and they do the analysis on the basis of that okay so this is that area building gross plan and this is the schedule for that that this particular function is accommodating uh, 33 square feet of area that pertains to if you just divide it then you'll get the percentage that of your total functions in building of 100% the circulation portion contributes this much portion okay so this was about that the next is this room schedule which I already so just as when you place rooms like this and it automatically generates this room schedule that is at length level you have so many different rooms and with uh, the, so many areas okay and next is that it very efficiently if I just go to annotate and let's say tag tag all by doors and windows and just click apply and OK then it will add all the annotations for this particular door and window and likewise you and also you can see that on the first floor also I have not added but you just need to tag all and let's say doors and windows right now I have added openings only for this particular first and length level plan and first floor okay so what does that this this does what this does is that um, it automatically with this we can generate a schedule also related to door and windows so under view category if I just go to schedule and quantification you see that for doors and that will create the door schedule okay and we can add all that information which is essentially needed for execution on site to this particular thing and these are the various fields that I'm going to add for this mark value and thickness and width okay and now you can adjust and categorize it properly so first should be level then should be its mark then should be its count family and type its width thickness cost should be the last factor and just by going to sorting and grouping I will say that I want to sort by level with header and footer 
and then by mark and grand totals and uncheck itemize every instance and formatting and for level i will say that hidden field and for count and cost i would say that please calculate totals and with all that information i just press ok so you see that this has beautifully created our door schedule which are feeding all saying that feed all the information that are needed for execution on site that this particular door d2 are having four instances and this is just a random cost factor that i have added so that's why it is calculating the cost also for all that okay likewise very efficiently you can just go to schedule and quantify windows and settings and quantification and just go to windows and add the same cost and count and family and type and this will have the height as well as the sill height since it is a window so level and sill height and width this won't have a thickness and yes let's go to let's organize this a bit and let this cost be the last factor and count and family and type and mark very important to mark and let that go up count family and type with height and cell height okay and this with this filter uh, sorting grouping level header footer same customization grand total don't itemize and formatting for levels i would say that hidden field and for count and cost i would say that please calculate totals and just press ok so and this has I made some mistake I guess sorting and grouping level and yes level it's fine oh yeah sorry then by mark okay so that was the only issue and you see there w2 is a type that is having four instances on print level and likewise all this information has been created and generated and just imagine how much time it would take creating your schedule on AutoCAD or Excel sheet manually okay so likewise this floor schedule has been created that these are the different types of floor that are resting on so many levels and this is the number this is the total square feet area that is has okay fine and next is this wall schedule so this are the different types of wall as segregated and, and divided as per the levels that is the basement level has total 12 walls of which this are the compound wall and the lift shaft and the main wall its base constraint top constraint its area width and volume okay so finally likewise you have the, all the categories there's a 4.5 inch wall and this curtain wall and beam wall and different categories of wall which i have designed for this particular project and it's giving this grand total 121 so much area and so much of so much cubic feet of volume and so much square feet of area so this is the total quantification of the wall okay next is that if i just take you to this plinth level and right now this particular floor schedule and wall schedule doesn't shows the attributes the material attributes attached to it to demonstrate that if i just uh, go to this uh, under this particular thing if i just uh, open up this section then if i go to section one uh, yeah then uh, you cannot visualize yeah you can visualize okay so this is the 150 mm or this is the uh, anatomy of that particular concrete slab which has been casted let me just take you to this level so this is the one mm 150 mm thick slab which has been casted and this are the finished floor layers so where are those layers in that particular schedule 100 and 100 mm of finished flooring with the different layers i have provided just go to the anatomy of that then if you remember we had designed this with this brick beds sand bedding 
that is PCC or sand bedding mortar and finish flooring and just uh, change this preferred units to millimeters and okay and fine so now if you just this is what we have designed which is just a flashback of that 19 mm is the finishing material 12 mm is the mortar 20 mm is the pcc or sand bedding and 50 mm is the brick beds is the anatomy of the finished floor on the first level okay so where are those in that schedule so again let me just press this and change the preferred units to feet and inches for each fraction of inches so for that what Revit has provided is this under schedule this material take off. Okay. So what when you when you create a floor schedule or wall schedule that will create the structure part of it and uh, document that and calculate uh, populate that. Okay. But if you want the area or the costing and the bifurcation of the material, then you need to call out for this material takeoff. And you see that you have this floor material takeoff. And yeah, I was in, uh, working on this, so I had just none. Okay, so with that, it will just give you a total roundup of this are the materials that has been used entirely on your different floors. That is, this is the wash tiles, and it has bifurcated that floor wise and material wise, okay, and level wise. Yeah, this is a concrete casting place with the wooden deck then this is the pcc and this is the mortar and the brick beds and every each and every material is giving it computing its area okay likewise we can also have the wall material take off so uh, because this different walls have different materials for example the compound wall has compound wall materials this right now named compound wall material but this is a different material than this is the lift shaft material. This is the brick cladding material. This is the main inch, nine, main wall nine inch. But that is all. This all are materials actually. These are not walls. Uh, I've just named it according to the wall that I assigned that material, particular material to. But these are just the material. And this is, if I just click this filter and say that I just want to, I forget this equals to, let's say plaster then you can have the total amount of the total volume of plaster that is going to be used in your entire project okay <clears throat> but how will you cross check or how will you tally that whatever you have designed whatever you have scheduled what you have your whatever you have quantified is up to the mark and is correct or not okay so for the only way out of is is that from day one while you're working on rabbit you need to be clear and very clear about each and every information that you feed on to the steady elements and you need to be very precise while working and just to demonstrate this i will give you a small example wherein with where we switch between imperial to metric system so we can have some round figures so we can tally and have a cross check that whatever we have done is correct or not and the same process you are going to adapt and follow for your lifetime working on any of this design projects okay so this let's take just an example a simple example of this is a three meter by three meter of cube okay these are the four walls the preferred unit is uh, meters okay so these are the four walls which I have drawn and by transfer project settings under this manage uh, by transfer project settings I have taken all the materials from that particular project that we were working on to this particular project and yeah so we have all these materials okay so and also the wall types the wall types i have taken this one main wall which is if i just go to edit type and if i just go to edit then this is that one main wall which is 0.23 i have rounded off and 15 mm plaster on both the sides which is essentially needed to be 12 mm but just in just to demonstrate you uh, just to cross check and verify so some figures which you can compute actually so that was the only purpose and 
15 mm plaster internal and external and that is i have designed that wall that way okay now <clears throat> whenever you design or place any wall onto rabbit then uh, essentially if i just click this and if i just draw this wall then you see that when you select that wall it snaps to the center of that particular wall joint see, in both the cases it snapped to the centers even if you use the location line to be finished face exterior or core face exterior it doesn't make any uh, any difference when you schedule and quantify this this particular wall this wall is going to compute half of this and likewise this wall is going to compute the half of this so what is the way out the way out is that while going to whenever you model uh, a 3d wall see mostly that is not going to be an issue because at every junction you will have the column and you will have the wall between that but there are few junctions or there might be a couple of many junctions wherein you will face a situation where you don't have a structural element and you have a wall joining with a wall okay so in that case you need to quantify this and schedule this properly so in that case what you need to do is that whenever you draw this wall you just go to modify and click this wall join wall joints and disallow this joint okay and let this wall come this this exterior end and this wall be properly between these two ends so now i can say that perfectly this two walls are three meters by three meters and this is the extra 230 mm added element with 15 mm of plus 7 this side and 15 mm of plus 7 this side so 15 plus 13 is 30 so 230 plus 30 that is 260 fine so i have already just created and what we need is that we need to cross check that whatever i have done is proper or not okay and one more thing my last tip regarding this is that if you just click 3d of this then you will see all the edges just because those walls are not joined and those walls are separate you will see all the edges but what to be done in this case because anyway we want this position if we'll join the walls then that would not compute or that would not create a schedule perfectly so in this case what needs to be done is that while this just join the geometry and so this doesn't have any effect on the schedule okay and this will join and join switch order and this, yeah. so you don't have a plaster here okay uh, you need to do that for all of this okay so just do it and now what important is that how to uh, see so wt and yeah so this are the four walls so three meters by three meters so for the length for the two walls you can see that three meter by three meter is there. but as i said that 260 that is 0.26 on 0.26 on this and 0.26 on this so this particular wall will have length of 3.52 meters okay that is 260 mm plus 260 mm that is 520 mm that is 0.52 meters so it is reading that perfectly next is this area that is the three meter wall three meter of width and three meter in three meter of length and three meter of height so three cross three that is nine meters square and this is 3.52 cross 3.52 that is 10.56 meters square okay so this is the area next is this volume volume is nothing but three cross three that is nine cross its width that is 2.340 meter cube and in this case 2.3 seven four kicks meter cube okay now i just need to show you this okay so next is this cost and cost of masonry work with plaster and number of bricks so how did i derive this so this is just an assumption uh, that i've taken by me that is i'm considering that the masonry work of one square feet of wall is 200 so that is probably multiplying that particular thing Let me just show you it's added just like we did it for that particular room schedule i added the 
calculated formula for this particular thing that what, what, what should be the cost of masonry work with plaster. So that is that area into its cost. The cost is 200 into 10.76. Like what is this 10.76? That is this costing, this 200 is the costing of one square feet of masonry work, which is there in my neighborhood. That might differ in your case. You can just uh, enter your figure. But just, just to explain the motive is just to explain the fundamentals of this. That is area into its cost into 10.76 that is one square meter to uh, one uh, sorry well, yeah one square meter to one square feet okay so that is how i have achieved this particular so the cost of masonry work with plaster this, for this all these walls and the round round to the totals and next is this number of bricks so that is very interesting so number of bricks if i just click the edit then that is that volume volume of that particular brick divided by 0.003 meters cube which should be actually uh, 0255 but even though if i enter this and will accept that yeah 0.003 that's so how did i derive this particular value so that is on the basis of let me just show you a simple PPT for that. The size of one brick in my neighborhood or in my area is what we use for general construction is 0.23. That is 9 inch into 0 0.115, 4 and half inch and 3 inch that is 0 0.075 meter that is height, a length by width by height. That is the size of one brick in my neighborhood. So that might differ. Just if you take consider the modular brick, just that that would be 190 by 90 by 90. So on the basis of that, we get the volume of one brick. That is this much meter cube. Mortar or plaster use is 10 mm. So if there is a brick laid, then we need to add the 10 mm for all, to all these dimensions. So that gives me the size of one brick. And on the basis of that, I would get the volume of one brick. That is 0 0.00255 meter. And on the basis of that, number of bricks in one meter cube would be volume of one meter cube, that is one, divided by volume of one brick with mortar, that is this figure. So that would give me that number of bricks in one meter cube is this 392. Okay. And this is that particular I have inferred for my local mission that the for if if, if we have a masonry work of nine inch of wall, then the rate for one square feet is 120 rupees and 19 mm and 20 12 mm plaster so i have just taken a random figure of 200 of one square feet of brick masonry construction with plaster okay so on the basis of that the number of bricks has also been derived but this is the cost of the masonry work with plaster what if you want to exclude only plaster from this so how will you do that so for that i as i earlier said you have this material takeoff so under that, I just open up this material takeoff. Then this is the schedule for that, which is reading only right now the plaster material. That is because I have filtered it. If I just check this none and press OK. Then we have right now two materials for this particular walls. That is one is the main wall material. I have given the material name also to be the <laughs> same name for both. The, uh, the wall and the material name are given the same name. So this is the main wall and this is the plaster. So if I want to exclude just the plaster from this, then under filter, I would say that equals material name and that equals plaster and okay. So for that, what it is doing is the same thing. That is under field, if you say that the cost of plaster, and if you just see that material area, that material area is so so and so and the material cost the material cost is i have added 80 so that that is how it is giving us that the cost of plaster for one wall is so much cubic <coughs> sorry cost of plaster is so much rupees and that is our total up. okay but how where have i derived onto this particular 21.12 and 18 meters that is very simple and if we just take this and the blue tea then for plaster we are just going to consider that 
12 mm of plaster so its length so its volume in this case is negligible so that is always calculated on the basis of area so 3 meters cross 3 meter that is 9 meter and on the both the sides internal and external so if it is 19 mm then again that will differ that figure will differ so 18 mm 9 plus 9 3 cross 3 is 9 and 9 to the 18 so 18 meter square of area and in this case also 18 meter of area but only this 0.26 here and 0.26 here that is 0.52 and 0.52 into 2 that is 0.52 into 2 that is 1.04 is being added to that particular this particular thing and that's why it is reading as 12.12 .12 meter square okay so this with this generalized uh, situation this, this figures are just with pretty much assumptions and basic figures uh, only motive is to show you the function and the way how it is done you, know, you can manipulate it your way but the only intention to say uh, show you this show you guys this is that now whenever you start your project or your construction or your 3d model in Revit, that should essentially follow all these standards and from scratch it should be modeled feeding all this essential information to this and with that you'll be able to achieve all the schedule materials and all the information that is essentially needed for its execution with i would i wouldn't say that that would be accurate but that would be quite precise enough at least better than what we manually do it on autocad with calculator and it will save a lot of time okay so if you think that this was this video was worth and this information which i shared was worth and my work and my heart was uh, worth it then please enroll for the course and let's meet one on one and if you want to get to the basics of this and learn everything from zilch that it's starting from zero till end then kindly enroll for the course let's meet one on one and let's learn together and let's grow together okay bye and have a wonderful day ahead